Peggy 16. Peggy 16. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the official Wizard Wars launch stream here from the Monster Energy DreamHack Studio. My name is John Rick, now also known as Tolly Moo, and with me here is Graham Murphy, also known as Asher, the community manager for Wizard Wars. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the delay in us starting the stream. We had some technical difficulties, but now we are up and running, and boy, do we have a full yes. schedule for everyone in here today. So, First of all, we are going to have a short and brief interview with the developers of the game. Then we're going to move our way into the workshop corner where we have one of the artists from Paradox North doing a staff actual item for the game mm -hmm. live. Uh, and she's going to take you through her process of creating items. Then we have a few professional cosplayers that are going to jump in and they are going to also do an item. They're going to actually update us on what they're doing later. Then we have a game with Oh, lo and behold, Legion, yes. the most famous and skilled Wizard Wars team there is in the entire world and winner of the ESL. They're going to play versus the developers that we're interviewing. And <laughs> well, I'll correct you there. I'll correct you there. Actually, ESL was a mixed team. Legion, the ones who won the Vlad's Grand Tournament, this uh, community created tournament just recently. Um, it was run by a Russian community member, and we got about 36 teams or so taking part. And uh, these guys, they won, they took the prize, and we promised they'd get to face up with the devs in the end. So uh, All right. this is why they're here. Yeah. It'd be interesting results, nevertheless. Yeah, they're going to get stomped. So the, I'm pointing at the devs, by <laughs> oh, the way. Oh, don't but, spoil uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then finally, we're going to have a exciting giveaway with a physical item that we're going to go into deeper later mm -hmm. that anyone can participate in. So, Graham, we yes. have some community people here. Do you want to take us through the faces we're going to see tonight? Yeah, uh, like I said, we have um, people from Legion who have come over from their selected corners of Europe to be with us. Um, we have uh, ACD from Finland. We have uh, Walter Wolf, who is Croatia. We have Macho Man from Denmark. And then we have Dobby, who has just traveled down from the, the frozen wastes of the north of Sweden. So um, yeah, they're here to strut this stuff and uh, beat the devs at their own game. Is this the first time they're actually together in person? I believe so, yes. Oh. There was lots of introductions awesome. and who are you, which one are you type things going on. So yeah, it's just cool for them to be here and whip the devs as well as say hello to each other. So. Mm. All right, great. So, uh, important thing to note is that we are going to take a lot of questions during the stream yes. and we're going to take a lot of input from everyone watching. So, if you're interested in participating with us, be it ask someone something, you know, tell us to clarify, whatever, please tweet to hashtag WizWarsLaunch. That's W I Z Wars Launch. Um, and we will be able to see whatever you're talking about. Of course, you can do it in a Twitch chat too, but as everyone knows, it's kind of hard to follow what's going on in those. So, it's a lot easier if you do it that way. Um, and actually, with no further ado, I am going to go over to the developers and have a brief chat, brief chat with them um, about well, who they are, what you can expect from them, and what they've been doing with Wizard Wars. <sighs> Hello, guys. Hello there. You're lined up so nicely here. Yes, I know. 
All right, so clothing and everything. here you go. You actually get, get the microphone from here. So, Thank you. Um, you're a common face in the Wizard of Wars streams. Uh, you're, of course, David Nishagen, of the course. studio lead. No longer studio lead. What's your title right now? My title is game director. So game I am director. responsible for, well, the game, the direction of the game. All right, so, I mean, what have you been doing on Wizard Wars historically? Uh, so originally, I am uh, the lead designer who started with the whole concept of trying to take the Magicka uh, spellcasting system and put it in a balanced PvP environment. Okay. Uh, and that was quite a challenge, <laughs> to say the least. Magic, if you haven't looked at it or tried it, uh, it's a very complex spellcasting system where you can combine eight different elements in literally thousands of different ways. Okay. And so we streamlined it a bit to make it balanceable for PvP. And we've had a lot of feedback during the early access and beta period that you've, of course, been working intensely with. So, leading up to this new game mode that we're launching tomorrow, uh, what has been your main part in the latest development of Wizard Wars? Well, the core of the whole game is like it's a spellcasting action PvP game. And that's something we'll always stick to. It will always be a competitive game. but. With the traditional game mode that we've had, Wizard Warfare, it is almost entirely based on PvP action, right? No matter which situation you go into, you will run into another player. And the skill ceiling in this game is very, very high. So if you're a beginner, you will have a very hard time. So we tried to make something a bit more, I wouldn't say noob friendly, well, noob friendly in a way, but some more accessible for new players so that there's something they can do to, to help their team win without actually going into uh, you know, uh, a direct PvP combat with experienced oppose, uh, opposition. And this is something we've, of course, done with the, a mix of community feedback and metrics that we gather, kind of trying to puzzle out what catches player into the game and how to make it more approachable for people coming from different genres or with more experience in the more MOBA-type games, I guess. Exactly. All right, so passing over to your colleague here, Stefan. Um, first of all, what's your title and job at Paradox? I'm a programmer and uh, mostly the UI or features like in, in the interface. So, and, uh, but I've also been working on the new game mode that so we're going to see here today. What so. have you been doing more exactly at the new game mode? As, uh, have you been doing mostly the UI stuff or have you been contributing more to the gameplay? Uh, it, it's both UI and gameplay, but uh, most of the like game mechanics, core mechanics like spellcasting, was already in place. So it's uh, it's mostly UI and uh, like small things around. But all right. So through your history at Paradox and Wizard Wars, what do you feel is your biggest personal contribution to the game? Uh, I think it's like the progression tree. I, I've done a lot of things on the store and. I've also done the new game mode, um, been part of that, and uh, now I'm w also working on uh, the crafting system that's coming up soon. So. so if anyone feels that the menus and everything is approachable in the game, that's you that they should <laughs> <Yes>. think. <laughs> well, it's actually very clear and professional nowadays compared to the early stuff we had. Indeed. So it looks very nice. Yeah, thank you. All right, Marcus. Yeah. Hello, who are you? Um, my name is Marcus Olsen, and uh, I do uh, design, or I did design and uh, scripting for uh, Wizard Wars. All right, so what have you done with the new game mode? Uh, yeah, basically, I came on the team um, to uh, sort of brush out the basics for the new game mode. So, what I've been doing is iterating on a, the concept of having the uh, sort of more noob friendly game mode being created from start or from scratch. Um, so I've been, yeah, just trying to make that happen from the start, I guess. Uh, also designed the, the level okay. gameplay wise. Cool. So, question, uh, same question there. Where, what do you feel is your biggest personal contribution to the game and your history at the company? Oh, the thing you're most proud one. of? Uh, yeah, I'd say it'll be winning one of these games today, probably. <laughs> so you're predicting you're actually going to win at least one game? Yeah, I'll, I'll hope so, at least for now. We'll see how big my mouth is afterwards, but yeah. It's going to be exciting, nevertheless. It's going to be a blast. 
All right, and finally, Stefan, or Stefan, sorry, it's, it's confusing with the Stefan and Stefan here. Basically the same name. Basically the same name for non-Swedes, it's probably the same name. Yeah. Uh, you've been with us a long time, uh, but I'm going to do it, I'm actually going to do it in reverse order, uh, and first ask you, what are you doing at the company? Uh, I am the lead artist of uh, Wizard Wars and Paradox North. So I'm basically, yeah, coordinating artists, making sure that the art style stays coherent and uh, supporting my artist and in yeah making content for the game so you're like the worst backseat driver there is yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> all right so since you've been with us for a very long time i'm going to start with what do you feel is your biggest contribution to the game oh uh adding rainbows i'm responsible for that there are rainbows in the game yeah really I haven't played it enough. Where, where do you find the rainbows? Oh, the swords making rainbow trails. Oh, oh that's actually really cool. Uh, all right, and um, for this game mode, what do you feel is the thing that you brought and what have you done with it? Uh, basically, I took the uh, level and uh, yeah, propped it up, made it look good. It does look good. People are going to see it later. It's actually, this is yeah. the first time people see the level, right? Yes. Oh, exciting. It looks really nice. It's, it's an exciting thing. It, it kind of gives you the, the whole old Magicka feel where it feels a lot more, as you say, propped up and kind of deep and there's just tons of stuff to do there. I'm still confused when I play it. It's big. It's big. It, it, it is big. It's, it kind of gives you a whole other space compared to the other levels where you're just like, every time you turn you get crushed by something or attack someone or do something. So it's, it's kind of more evenly paced. All right, so I'm going to let you guys go and prepare mentally for the game and, as you say, hopefully win at least one game. Um, for everyone watching, it's going to be a... Well, it's going to be five matches, but it's not going to be best out of five. So you're going to see, no matter how many games these guys lose, they're still going to be demolished five times. So don't worry, you're going to get your fair piece of fun, no matter how much they get crushed. And these games kind of get more evenly paced because you have to take a longer time to play the game. So it's definitely going to be a lot of fun action. Uh, I'm actually going to head over to the workshop area now and see what's going on with Helena and the cosplayers. And I'm going to grab my, my monster here. We didn't find any water, but I'm hoping this will suffice. Hello. Oh, this is... What are you doing here? Is that, a, is that wood? Oh, you're going all at it with creating stuff. Hello, Helena. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing very well. What, what good. Are you, I'm are doing you, good. <laughs> you've already started with the staff here, I see. Um, I have started with the staff. Um, I've made a really basic staff. I don't know if you guys can see it yet, um, but it's a, a blank staff because the idea is that we're supposed to make it together with the community. So this is how you start out a lot of the stuff you, you work on? Yes, this is exactly how I start out most of the stuff that I make. All right, so actually I'm going to have to ask, what do you do at the company? You've been with us for quite some time too, and you... You do items, you do props, you do everything. What, what's your title? Uh, yeah, I've been with the company for 14 months and my title is 3D artist. So I make, uh, well, 3D assets. Uh, I've made a lot of the weapons and a lot of the staffs and a lot of props for the levels. You, you told me a story about the most fun you've ever had working with the game and you did the same thing for a month. Do you want to take us through your creative process of what you did and why? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, when I, a few months in, when I started out at the company, we were making the new cave level. We were making props for the cave level. And I was tasked with making rocks. So for a month, I made rocks. Just a lot of rocks? Just like all the rocks. All the rocks in that level uh, I have touched upon. But how, how long does it even take to create a rock? Like, do you, do you sculpt them after preference or do you just create like this huge library of stones that anyone can place anywhere? What, what's the, the mental process of going into one month of rock making? Because, I mean, for someone interested in doing your job, that's, a, that's something they're probably going to be confronted with, right? Yeah. Um, drugs, mostly. Drugs. <laughs> drugs uh, and made me... By that me, would mean coffee. Yeah. And alcohol. Yes, yes, of course, of course, coffee. Um, you'd be surprised at how difficult it is to make a rock because every person knows what a rock looks like. So if you make it, if you make it look like even a tiny bit off, people won't buy it. It will look wrong, it will look like plastic, it won't look natural. So I spent a lot of time just Oh my god, I spent a lot of time just looking at pictures <laughs> of rocks and studying rocks and then I made the rocks that you can see in 
in most in the cave levels. That was wonderful. So you said you've done a lot of the staves, you've done the, some of the robes, no? Or is it mostly weapons that you do? Uh, I make only like dead things, things that don't move. <laughs> so I made a lot of weapons and a lot of staves, staffs, staves. Staff. I, I don't know staves. We're gonna go I think, with staves. Yeah, it's staves. I think you're, you're gonna say staves. this word a lot during the evening, so let's go with staves. Let's go with staves. Okay, so so what's your like normal workflow when you're doing a staff? Like how what's your mental do you have like a, a so they say the staff and come to you and say, Okay, I want you to do this item or is it more like, Okay, we're gonna add five new staffs to the game, let's have a brainstorming meeting or what what's the process of creating a, a dead item in Wizard Wars? A dead item, a soulless dead item. Um, both, actually. Sometimes uh, David comes and says, "You know what? We're we're doing a cross promotion with some site or something. We need we need an item for this. Can you do it?" Yes, I can. That's my job. <laughs> uh, or we say we're well, missing out on a water staff. We need a new water staff. Uh, can you make something? Yes, I can. And sometimes this would be so cool. Can we do this? Yes, we can. So that's basically it. I get a um, what you call it. Yeah, like like they they ask me to make something, and uh, I make it. You sound like you're a yes woman here. That you just want to do everything. Well, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's kind of my job. So when you people gear tell your me what to do, and then I make it pretty. My job is to make it pretty, that's basically. Awesome. Yes. So when you gear yourself up in game, what what's your normal gear like? Do you take your own items, and and what's the do you take the thing you're most proud of and wear it, or what's your deal there? I wish that was the case, uh, but since I like to spec stone or earth, um, I have to go with earth items. And you haven't created many of those. I have created some. I've created the uh, stone mallet. I don't know if it's. Uh, oh, the yeah. one with the hovering. Yeah, the hovering. Oh, rocks. that's a cool one. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I use I usually go steam engineer rope, like the steam rope, and uh, I spec speed and rock. So I run around and I snipe people. Oh, you're one of those. Mm, I, off screen rock sniping is the worst. Yes, uh, I'm really bad one on one. Like I always, I freak out. It's like stress is not my. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I run around. I haste, haste, snipe. I see my friend is in trouble. I haste, snipe, and and cap points. Hey, as long as you contribute to the team. Yes. Okay, so you are going to sit here for a couple of hours and create an item together with the community. And this is this is one of the moments where you have the opportunity to use the Wizard Wars launch hashtag because this this item is going to be available in the game for free. For everyone, I know at least. Yes. It's going to be in the store. That's the idea. Um, and anyone can get this, which means that anyone can contribute to what they're going to wear in game and to we have been what, yeah, we it's going to end up as we have been talking briefly about a, a whole different assortion of ideas but you were kind of going for a mix and match of everything that the community is and suggests and just trying to get it into one massive piece uh yeah that is my idea because um some like i i made a I made a thread about this on the forum. Uh, if you want to post your ideas there, that's fine. I'm checking it all the time. Not much is going on. <laughs> uh, a lot of things are going to get lost in the Twitch chat, so I would recommend Twitter or the post on the forum. And my idea was to um, to sort of make it like yeah, like a community. Things the, a staff that represents the community. Um, a lot of inside jokes and references. That's that was my idea. I I had a lot of like uh, people have like written um, what you're gonna call it. like they they've written exactly what they want, how the staff is gonna look like, the affinities, the description, and those are great. Like they're really imaginative, but that's not what I'm after. I'm after something that we make together, like something a smorgasbord, a smorgasbord of all things that is the Wizard Wars forum. We're going back to my table idea here. I'm really going for a table staff. I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping that this is this is where you're going to do, because I, I imagine that you have kind of a vague outline that you're going with that you can kind of build upon as the evening mm -hmm. progresses. Yeah, I was thinking of like uh, either a, a totem, like a totem pole, a totem staff. Oh, that's cool. M maybe a small like a shelf staff or just a really like stick with just a lot of stuff hanged, like hanged or hammered or taped on with duct tape. Like mm. something like that's literally just crafted by a lot of crazy wizards. That's that's what I want. All right. So, uh, I mean, as I mentioned, everyone can go in and suggest in your thread. It's on the Paradox platforms, right? Yes. Uh, and then you can also tweet, uh, tweet to us at yes. WizWars or yeah. Hashtag Wiz Wars launch, um, and you will take that into consideration. And we're going to come back to you later in the afternoon um, and check See on your progress. Happens. Yeah. All right. I wish you the best of luck. And I have a mental image of this now, <laughs> and I'm really yeah. expecting some fun progress as we as we get ahead. Yeah, I hope so too.
All right. I hope so too. With All right. no further ado, I'm gonna I'm gonna snag this from you. Okay. Oh, and I'm gonna like I'm gonna go kitty style, and I'm gonna sit on the t floor here because you have you guys have been positioning yourself kind of interestingly down here. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, wizards? You are the wizards by the launch. I'm actually gonna start by giving right. you this thing. All right. Hello. So. Can I sit down here without everyone getting really pissy? I yeah. hope so. <laughs> sit down. Make right. yourself at home. Hello, cosplayers. Who are you? Hello. My name is Joanna or Seville. And uh, yeah, I'm a cosplayer here to make a staff together with my f wizard friends. But they're, they're wizards and you're the cosplayer here. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's your story? How did you get into cosplaying? Why are you here? And how do you define yourself as a cosplayer? I started cosplaying when I was 13, and today I'm 22, so it's been a while. And uh, I made my first costume for an event with my mother. Uh, she helped me sew and stuff. What was it? It was Riku from Final Fantasy X. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> a long time ago. But since then I've uh, evolved a lot, and I started competing a lot, and uh, doing workshops, and you know, doing work as a cosplayer. Nice. So you told me that you, you'd like to define yourself as semi-professional. I say you have earned money and you have a kind of won prices, which makes you professional. Uh, but you <laughs> yeah. have been doing stuff for DreamHack and everything. Do you have like a, a favorite build that you've been working on or something that you just feel like this is the most awesome achievement I've ever done as a cosplayer that just felt you feel real and great? Oh, that's a good question. Um, certainly winning at DreamHack was a big you know, milestone for me. Because uh, you kind of get, uh, you rewarded for your hard work. You feel like, oh yeah, I actually made it, you know. But, you know, teaching people, that's very rewarding in itself. I think that's one of the best feelings. Oh, so you've been working with newer cosplayers too and kind of getting mm -hmm. them into that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like teaching, show them techniques and uh, ways to work with materials and stuff like that. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so what are we doing this evening? I, I see, I mean, it looks like kind of a spear thing now, but you said it's a staff. What, do you have an ambition here or are you just going nuts? I see Kimberly here. She's drawing what looks like a signpost or a fence. Or I, I'm not really sure. Kimberly, what are you doing here? Oh, by the way, everyone, this is this is Kimberly. She's hiding behind uh, the robe here. You, you can actually introduce yourself before we go into the, the specifics of that. Um, my name is Kimberly. I, at the moment I'm not making a fence, to, to be honest. It's supposed to be, uh, at the end of it, the details for our awesome magic staff. Which looks like a fence. Uh, which looks like a fence. It, it will all make sense in the end, I oh. promise. All right, so you've been cosplaying for quite some time too. What, what's your story? Um, I've actually just been cosplaying since 2011, 2012. Uh, so not for that long. But uh, I just got into it through friends and through family. That's also a bunch of geeks. <laughs> <laughs> and you work with DreamHack too a lot. Yeah, so you've I'm, kind of seen that side of exactly, the cosplay. Exactly. I work as a project manager more in the cosplay area than a cosplayer. I'm, I make different contests and championships and media stuff. And that's what I do. <laughs> All right. Um, so, can you explain to me if this is not a fence? What are you doing? It's angled stuff, and it kind of looks. Do you really want to know at the moment? I, mean, I, I kind of just want to. I want to hint because we're gonna go back to you guys later too and kind of get into what your results are. But I, I just want a vague gut feeling on what to expect. Do you want to build a snowman? Hmm. Do you want to build a snowman? Oh. Okay, yeah. That, that's actually... <laughs> okay, no, your time is over. Let's go to your friend. This, that's not acceptable. Th that's... No, no. Mm. This, this guy here is also affiliated with DreamHack. Yeah. Give us a short before we move along. Uh, my name is Herman. I'm again... Uh, I've been cosplaying for five years now. I've been competing at DreamHack and I'm currently in the group that arranges the cosplay contest at DreamHack. Awesome. So you're, you're also professional. Uh, no. No, I, I, I Almost, dare say you are. Maybe. Okay, he, you think I'm professional. Okay, so can you give me a four second elevator pitch on the thing you're holding in your hand and why we should interest ourselves in it? It's the stick part of the staff. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> thank you guys. We're going to return here later. I'm, there's the camera. Uh, I'm going to go over to my colleague over in the couch over there and he's going to talk with the team captains to prepare ourselves for the actual game. So, Graham, I send it over to you.
Thank you very much, John. Uh, yeah, I'm actually sat here with uh, ACD of Team Legion. He's the uh, community team that has come in to uh, yeah, strut their stuff today. And then, of course, we have Nisargan, who uh, you guys yeah, just saw just a little while ago. So uh, I'll begin with the home team first. So I'll pass this over to David. No offense or anything. Um, Thank you. So yeah, um, yeah, you're a dev, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get to that. The important thing right now is you know, this, this face-off, you versus Team Legion. It, it's been, you know, waiting to come for a while now. Originally, we were like, the Vlad's Grand Tourney happened, and we said, yeah, we'll put the devs versus community. What can we do? Um, and then launch happens. We thought, why not get them here in the Dreamhack studio and, you know, face-to-face, -face, they can uh, show us what they got. So uh, you <laughs> handpicked a team of devs here. Um, I've heard you said that they were the less important people. No, no, okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> so why have you chosen the team that you have tonight? All right, so obviously, um, Marcus is uh, one of the core designers of the mm -hmm. actual game mode. So he knows all the bells and whistles and the tricks. Right? So as the tactical genius, he's the, uh, yeah. That's pretty much the advantage we will have. Right? Okay. We cannot beat these fine gentlemen at actual PvP combat. Mm -hmm. I doubt it'll happen. We'll do our very best. Maybe we, if we team up, right? Right. Uh, but from a tactical and strategic perspective, maybe. Maybe we have a chance. Okay. Right? So that's Marcus for the game mode. Mm -hmm. uh, Stefan is an excellent player. Yes. And he's also been, uh, you know, since he, he has also worked so much with the level. He knows the flow, he knows the pace. Yeah. That's also that. And Steph, uh, Stefan is also an excellent player who's also worked with the actual mechanics of the game mode. And then also, we have me. And, and then we have you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, so. I can heal people. You can heal people. So basically, the. the what I'm getting here is you guys are going to hide behind the two Stefan and Stefans mm -hmm. and hopefully not get mauled. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, you know, every, every army needs a good general leading from the back. So, yeah. Yes. Faster. Click faster. Yeah. Great. Has there been any kind of like training regime going on in preparation for today? or? No, not really, actually. Uh, that would be too humiliating for the opposition. But uh, Oh, of course. Yeah. No, but I mean, we have the advantage that we have actually played this game mode before. Yes, right? this is true. Nobody outside of the dev team has. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll have a bit of surprises there, I hope. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen you guys doing your uh, daily tests of the game mode itself. So, of course, you have the uh, familiarity with the map and the setting on your side. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where it's raw skill versus knowing the game mode from go. Because it should be noted that the community guys here, they haven't actually seen what they're going to get thrown into yet. So. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Pass the mic over to A A C D. I always can never remember how to pronounce your name. So yeah. hello. Um, yeah. Hello. I'm A C D. I'm the team leader slash captain slash manager or whatever of Team Legion, and uh, we just flown flew into Stockholm today to play against the devs. Yeah. So um, I mentioned earlier you've all come from various locations. Um, We'll say hello to Alias and T Golden, who couldn't make it. Um, we offered them to come over and uh, take part as well, because they were actually in the final winning matches of the Vlad's Grand Tourney. But thankfully, Legion is Legion, and there's many of you. So we have um, some people a bit close to home can come and join in. So we have yourself, which is ACD, as the slash 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 person. And then we have, maybe want to say who else we have along in attendance. Yeah, so we also have uh, Alias. I know, no Alias. We have Macho who is the AOE guy known for his lightning. Oh, uh, he's the, the, the king of lightning spam. Yeah. Yes. That's and the I know term. pretty much everybody else hates him for that. Yes. But it's it's not really that OP. OK. <laughs> or maybe we're, it we're, is. We're it's remind, a bit. We remember that <laughs> next time we see on the forums. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> OK. And uh, then we have Walter Wolf, who flew in from Croatia, mm -hmm. and uh, Dobby from Sweden. So yeah, that's our team today. It's uh, pretty much an old school setup. and. Uh, yeah, let's see where it gets us. OK, cool. So, I mean, as far as tactically, you know, we've seen you in action doing Wizard Warfare in the past, taking part in Vlad's Grand Tourney, and then some of you have been mixed into various teams for the ESL Cups as well. Um, what, what's your kind of strategy going out the gate on here? How are you going to deal with the dev team? Uh, actually, we have no clue since we haven't even seen the game mode yet. So we are probably going to start with pairs, since usually you yeah. should stick with our friends who can heal you 
So, so yeah, I think that's how we're going to start. But let's see if, if the map is actually too big for that. Um, you're you're going to be in for a surprise, yeah. They'll put it <laughs> that way. But um, that is a sound tactic, though. Healing is awesome in Magical Wizard Wars. The great thing about the game itself is you can spec however you like, but there's always the ability to heal. You're not locked into, you know, support or uh, ADC or whatever like that. Everyone can do everything all the time. So being with a buddy allows you to, you know, fall back and receive some extra support in terms of heals if you need it. Yes, the enemy can try and block these heals by using shields or walls or just body blocking the thing, but that is a real strong tactic. So. It's it's knowing how to heal properly and how to control the enemy's team, which is a big thing I find in Magical Wizard Wars. Um, so yeah, maybe we could give you a small hint of what the new game mode contains. Um, David, you can give them a couple of clues. How's that sound? Okay. <laughs> I'm sure the audience so, are keen to know what's coming up as well. Oh yes, so, of yeah, course. So yeah. uh, the first two keywords I will say: mm -hmm. Tesla troll. Tesla troll. There is Tesla troll involved. Okay. Right. Um, I, I hear the furious sound of charm magics being equipped as we, as mm -hmm. we speak. <laughs> uh, actually, yes. A lot of the things in this game mode uh, is a bit tweak, tweaked, or you can use things that are not very useful in the uh, Wizard Warfare matches mm -hmm. can be immensely useful in this one, in the Soul Harvest game mode, the new one. I so see. The, Are we, we talking magics here? Or? We're talking magics mm. and also spells. Mm -hmm. Some of the less used spells will see a lot more uh, use of them here. So we take the whole palette of these hundreds of different spells you can cast in Magic or Wizard Wars, and for Wizard Warfare there's one set that's optimal, and for this one there's another. Okay, so we're really flipping the game around in his head for these guys who are used to using certain, you know, spell combinations and magics and certain points. This yeah. is going to kind of need them to stretch their boundaries a bit and try some new stuff out. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you'll, of course, find that there's the synergy. I mean, the good spells are always the good spells. Yes. As soon as you bump into another player, you will always have the, the same, you will end up with the same core action mm. PvP experience there. Yes. That's the important thing though. I mean, you said about good spells. There is no good and bad in Magic of Wizards because everything has its place. I mean, yeah, you might say X spell is not as good as raw damage as Y spell, but it will have its other uses. It could be for crowd control or, you know, setting up status effects on people. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least from, from a design perspective, we thought that it, we tried to create a system where there's about 250 different spells in the game. Mm -hmm. You can cast any one of them at any given time. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to set it up so each of them would have a use. But then again, it's it's up to like the actual very, very skilled players to find how and when they can be combined to great combos and create... They're the guys who like break the game for you, first of all, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they break it, <laughs> yeah. and, and they also find these things, th these beautiful emergent things. When you create a bit of a complex system, like, mm. like the spellcasting system is, yeah. and then you put skilled people uh, on it, and you'll find them doing things you couldn't like figure out in the first place. You couldn't design it. But that's what this whole early access phase has been about, hasn't it? It's about putting it out there for the community, taking feedback on board, and fixing stuff where it needs fixing. Or, yeah, just uh, we've been so close with the community. And it's the high skill players, the low skill players, the medium skill players. Everyone has their opinion, which all contributes to make the game what it will be today and tomorrow as of launch day. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, I mean, <clears throat> it was very important for us to to really go in day one to say this is, we do it the the sort of intended early access way, mm -hmm. where we really set it up with the most rudimentary basic things. Yes. I think we had like one game mode, one map, two or four ropes maybe. Mm -hmm. There was no store. There was nothing no. in the beginning. <laughs> it was so crude. Yes. I think we had like three buttons in the whole UI. And then we continuously added, we have a continuous update cycle. So I think we added new things uh, every two weeks, mm -hmm. ever since we went into early access. So basically now. it's early access done right, is what we're saying. <laughs> At least the way that, that, yeah, that, I mean, that we think we should do it. The way we envision it should be was all about the community. And I feel yes. we've really pulled it off. But anyway, this is less about you uh, as the development team and more about the matchup between you guys. So we're going to cut mm -hmm. to a special sneak peek for trailer very soon. And uh, this is actually not due to be released until tomorrow officially. So whoever's watching on stream, you actually get to see it first here. Um, so any last words for your opposition first, David? 
Do you want me to be a nice guy? I can say good no, luck. No, you don't have to be nice at all. You know, the gloves will come off when the grounds start. That's yeah, when the real talking like, begins. So. No, I, I will actually say good luck. You'll need it. Ever the gentleman with yes. a little sting at the end there. And ACD, what, what have you got to say to the devs? Yeah, probably the first game might cause some problems for us, but I don't think there's like any chance for the devs after that. So. So, so we'll see. We shall see. Yes. So you're indeed. saying once you understand how this is working, it's going to be a steamroll from then on out. Yeah, indeed. Awesome. Well, uh, with that being said, I guess we should cut to our new trailer and uh, show the viewers at home um, some of the things they expect to see on launch day tomorrow. Peggy 16. All right, welcome back. And we are almost ready to get right into the game right now. Uh, we're just going to wait for the players to set up and we're going to take you briefly through the teams again. Mm. So, Graham, are you ready to introduce the players for everyone so they know what they're about and why we want to cheer for, I, I guess, Team Legion? I mean, we should cheer for the devs, I guess, just because they need it. This is the thing, you know, the dev team and Paradox, they pay my paychecks, but the community, they're, they're my community. So it's, yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I have split loyalties here, but... Um, yeah, before we actually kick off with the introductions, actually, no, I'll take that after. We'll, we'll roll with the introductions. So we have the dev team, as we've already mentioned before. Um, we had uh, David up on stage and showed us his uh, arsenal of secret weapons, as it were. So yeah, running from the end, we have the giggling, with uh, giggling David. Um, although he's, we appear to have the wrong overlay for the wrong team. Okay, we're looking at the community team on the monitor right now. <laughs> so um, from the left, we have ACD. Um, then we're going over to Walter Wolf, who is sat next to him. Next one in line is Dobby, and then we have Macho Man. So this is the community team. It might be a little confusing because we do have the overlay for the dev team. Though, yes, like that. but people um, understand. Yes, exactly. They understand what I'm talking about. That's the dev team to the and right. And now though. we can see the dev team. Uh, I mean, it yeah. kind of makes sense because they were hidden behind their names. Yes. So we, we saw the names, and then we see, okay, so we have David yep. to the leftmost. And then after that, we have Stefan. Stefan or Stefan? We should just call them 
both Bob. Or oh no, like actually that. that's Marcus before <laughs> that's Stefan. Marcus. Sorry, I, I you're have... entirely wrong. Yeah, no, but I saw dark hair. Mm. Okay, so it's David, Marcus, Stefan, and Stefan. Yes. And they all, they actually have team shirts. I didn't notice they're all Paradox tag. Yeah, yeah. They, Represent, they representing yo. the Paradox. I mean, we really need to brand this stream more so people understand this about you know, Paradox. Yes. And Magica and, and cool stuff. Respect the dead platypus. I mean, I, I have to say that they look kind of calm and collected. I'm, I'm happy for their sake. But I mean, this is, of course, the first game before they get utterly demolished and then they're going to Well, this is the thing. I mean, is it a case sad. of they don't quite expect what's coming up or uh, are they, they that confident? Have they played the, the pros before? No. <laughs> or they might have done through, uh, you know, random queuing about their business because our devs do actually play our game a lot. So uh, they could have met before. They might not have known they were meeting each other before. Obviously, they have their own uh, nicknames, etc. So, um, yeah, but this is the first time we have a dev team versus community team live in the flesh and stream to the people back home via the intertubes. All so, right, so yeah. before we actually go into the game and pass over to the game casters, we have a giveaway, Graham, where you can win a physical item we to, do. to game and become even more awesome and yes. be proud of winning stuff. And you, you win it like ridiculously easily. It's mm -hmm. how, yes. do, how do you do it? You, you can... So I'll, I'll run you through it. So basically, uh, those at home, you would have seen we had a Sapphire logo um, scattered around the stream so far. This is representing the fact that they are awesome and have given us a graphics cards to give to all of you equally awesome people. Not all of you, one of you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just caught myself there, otherwise our finance team would have Yeah, gonna, uh, that would have been um, horrible. So yeah, we have one graphics card for one lucky winner. To get this graphics card, you would have seen a link pop up just below the screen just now. Yep. Um, you basically need to go <coughs> to the Sapphire Technology Steam Hub. Um, once you are there, click Join to join the Steam Hub and check their most recent announcement, which will say the Magical Wizard Wars giveaway. Mm -hmm. And under that announcement, just write a comment in there. Hello, hi, mom, or Escher rules is okay, or something like that. And that will count as your entry to win this graphics card, which is an R9 285 Compact, Compact. which I was looking at this thing, and it is awesome. Basically, it's a full-size R9285, which has been shrunk, so not full size, but compact. So it's like all the power, but like half the size. But so can fit in like a small media PC. And yeah, stuff, you can so have a small media PC, or you can have it in your big beast gaming PC. It's a nifty bit of kit. So for people playing at like a big screen and the sofa or something, this is kind of an optimal card where you can just max up your your media center stuff. Yeah, I mean, if you want to run a small like you know media center PC in your living room, it's perfect. Or 4K um, movies. Yeah. So yep. I reiterate, <laughs> you need to join the Sapphire Technology Steam Hub to take part and comment in the most recent announcement which says Magica Wizard Wars giveaway or something along those lines. As you can see at the bottom of the stream now, you have a link which um, will direct you to directly to the correct place. And we're going to pick the winners by the end of the stream. So 7.55 CET, we yes. are going to announce the winners. So do it before the stream is over, yes. otherwise you're, you're out of it. So yeah. fast. Five minutes before the stream the ends will be the, the cutoff and then we will announce live on air who gets this graphics card. Awesome. Okay, so we, we actually have people joining us here from the almost other side of the world a couple of hours away. Uh, who are they? A couple of hours away. Uh, well, they're, they're, they're both... West or East Coast? Uh, they're East Coast. They're okay. both located in the region of New York, I believe. Um, they're both community members. They'll be here casting this destruction that we're about to see live. Um, we have Tolerasia and uh, Black Box. Black Box and Tol, they have cast the Vlad's Grand Tourney um, in the past. So this is obviously where Legion came to light, was from Vlad's Grand, uh, Vlad's Grand Tourney. I can never pronounce that thing. Um, but yeah, these guys did an excellent job of casting. So basically, they're going to cast for us this evening and give us their awesome back and forth. They're good friends in real life. They have awesome chemistry, and they're super knowledgeable about the game. So yeah, I'm Talk about forward. hyping them up. They are awesome guys. I love them both. I've met Tol. He helped us out at PAX. We're happy. Yeah. So um, I guess we should hand it over to our uh, our buddies in the U.S. now. All right, casters, take it away. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Black Box. This is Tall. And uh, we are live from New York. We're uh, it's 11 a.m. I have class at 2 p.m. So hopefully, uh, hopefully these five games will be a quick stop, and I can go taste wine. And if he doesn't make it to the class, well, he'll just be late. Yeah, you know, it's a free elective. So, Toll and I, we... It, it wasn't true that no one else has played this map before. Toll and I did get... Uh, we gave ourselves a sneak peek via our uh, super secret um, pass to the super secret dev realm. We snuck on in. Yep, so uh, we, we saw some nifty things, so we will be able to... to 
be knowledgeable about that, hopefully a lot more knowledgeable uh, than you guys. So, uh, Toll, can you tell us um, who your favorite player is on Legion? All right, hold on. Let's take a look here. What are we dealing with? Oh, this is a tough choice. I mean, we've seen all these players in various tournaments from, you know, the last several months. And, I mean, Dobby is probably my favorite. He, he frequently comes out on top in the 1v1s, and he's got great split-pushing capability. Well, I think Dobby, Dobby he's pretty... He's a pretty good, cool guy, I think. But Macho Man with the big uh, teleport well, lightning plays. That's true. That's true. Macho was the one that, that went in and and single-handedly turned the 4v4 into a stomp. Yeah, for uh, those viewers who have not seen the game we're talking about, in the last ESL uh, finals, Macho Man was on the winning team. He uh, the Both teams were lo locked in the 4v4 combat. Uh, neither team was giving an inch, and then Macho Man teleports in, saves the day, and does some uh, self-cast lightning and uh, messes everybody up. And, he was uh, truly a Macho Man. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know anything about the the developers. I'm, I've never seen any of them play, but I'm, I'm sure they're no, quite I think, good. I, I think we did see them play on a stream a while back. Like over, over a year ago, there was a stream and some devs played, I thought. I don't think they did very well. Well, I hopefully they've had um, enough time to practice because they're going up against the best of the best. Yeah, so Black Box, I mean, just looking at these these teams here and, you know, some of these unknowns, these devs, I mean, they've had the game for a long time, right? They built it. Sure, so yeah. theoretically, I mean, you'd think that the advantage would be theirs. But, you know, they're so busy uh, typing working. away, right. actually working. Actually working. <laughs> you compare it to the community team who essentially do nothing else but play this game. Of course. No, that's what I... I mean, I only play Wizard Wars along with the other games that I also play. Like Wizard Wars. Like Wizard, like Wizard Wars and Magicka. Magicka 2. Oh my goodness, that's a good plug. I saw the trailer for that the other day. I it's actually... Yeah, the trailer is, is pretty nice. I think um, Wizard Wars has a pretty nice trailer. Uh, I hope the game starts soon. Though. Well, for now, uh, all we can really look at is the tiny little mini-map thumbnail. So let's talk about what we're looking at here. Well, I, I think know, the, is, the I Twitch the stream... stream can't see it. Can we give? Can we give the stream? No, we probably shouldn't. We shouldn't reveal anything ahead of time. I, I guess not. We but uh, keep it it's uh, keep it secret. Can we talk about it? Can keep we talk safe? about Soul Harvest? Soul can Harvest. We? Have we even? That that was in the trailer. We can say that. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so there are souls. Yep. And you harvest them, and then. After you harvest a bunch of shook souls, Toll, what do you do? Something happens. Yeah, we actually aren't quite sure what happens when uh, you harvest all the souls, but... Um, oh, we're going into the lobby here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. On the left-hand side, which is the green team, we That's have the devs. devs. We have one player running plus 59 rock. That means he's going to be very weak to lightning, which is going to make Macho Man basically demolish him. On the other hand, Macho Man will be very weak versus Rock. However, the pros are very good at changing wards. We'll have to see if the devs can keep up with it. For anyone who's tuning in and isn't familiar with Wizard Wars, there is a a concept in the game called warding, and it is uh, you can see all the players actually here on the uh, the pro side in the top right. The bottom left will be the the developers, and they're just getting their wards up now. You can. You can see some, some red and yellow circles around them. That protects them from those elements that are being thrown at them. They are splitting up. Looks like they've already damaged each other a little bit. So both teams are doing 2v2, two or 2-2 two, two, two uh, splits. Two, two splits. Yep. So, um, oh, okay, so the... Uh, Got Macho Man and ICD moving down into the bottom right, and they are moving into what we like to call the... This is the... the or, this is the, the Orc, orc Warrior, warrior that the pros are fighting on the right-hand side of the map. Looks like they're going for a classic tank and spank here. Yep. And so they are... Both teams have captured teleporters. So when one of... When either uh, member on either team dies... Oh, we're about to see a some action in the bottom right corner of the, the map. Time they, they run into each other. ACD ACD is, is going in 1v2. I don't know if he knows. Yep. Swapper He's just tanking up and waiting for his teammate. Walter Wolf coming in from the left. So Swapper is about to be sandwiched here. Oh, this is oh Macho Man and uh, Ace of the are fighting Dorima. Macho Man just went down. 
That's, I think that's the first kill. Is that the first kill? That is the first, is kill. The first kill. So the first kill goes to the devs. Ace of the still fighting Durama. Um, it looks like Ace of the has the advantage here. He goes uh, for an ASF, gets a, a lot of damage, and the heal comes in from from Walter Wolf. Durima is going to go down here, oh. but he almost cast it. Tried to throw a magic down right at the end, but not able to do much. Now, if we do take a look at the count at the top of the screen, both teams are almost even in the collection of souls. So the developers have a slight edge, 47 to 40. Um, but it looks like they've cleared out most of the camps on their side of the map. They're right, closing in on ACP right now. There's a fight going on. Uh, Dobby versus Nisagin. Uh Dobby gets a... Okay, so that <laughs> that cleans up really fast. And the Warland just spawned. Aesidi is locked in the 1v2 against Durima. Picking it up pretty well, trying to put down... He pushed them both out, and now he's going on the offensive. A nice fire rock there, followed up by Ice Spam and a classic... And he takes him down in the 1v2. That is a... Great advantage for Pops the pros. Magic and tries to make a run for it. Nice wall there behind. Uh, him. He is up. about to put him himself. He's about to run into the Oak Orc Warrior. And, and I don't know he's if he going to go down this. here. He is going to. He's trying to CC him, oh. and he just went down. For anyone who's hasn't played this mode before, which is everyone, uh, the Orc Warrior does physical and fire damage. So he does 300 total. You can block half, but not both. So you can. The best you can do is reduce his damage by so half. So the devs. Fighting. I. Not sure. So the devs are going for the troll. They, uh, I think this is smart on their part. He's going to get a healthy helping. Oh, oh but Walter, Walter Wolf, Wolf is coming in, uh, stopping Durma. Oh, oh Durma just the wasted -revive a revive. A double heal ward up, which reduces all healing to nothing. It's a, it's a heal over time. Oh, Walter magic. Wolf bumps into the Orc Warden again. Uh, these uh, pros probably want to stay out of. Out of the grill of these monsters, the crows are going for oh, the troll. Nice beaming here. Nice ASF. They, doesn't seem to work. They though. are going to get the kill, and they, they are it up. That going is a to... huge amount of souls, and the devs are swinging way into the lead. It's 68 to 104. All right, so uh, a one of the pros, here. one of the pros, just went down to the warden. Uh, hopefully, they buddy up here to take him down because the warden gives you a healthy helping of imps. So Notice the heavy prioritization on the healing of teammates. Moving up into the top right, we do have a 1v1 happening, which is about to be reinforced from the devs. Walter Wolf is fighting Squapper, 1v1, but Derma comes in from behind. I, putting oh, a heal no, no, Okay, so Derma could not heal his friend, and now he is locked in a 1v2. Do you think anyone's told them that the heal wards went out of meta a while back? I'm not sure, because... Uh, they seem to leave them on a lot. They, lo they seem to like these heal wards a lot to their own detriment because they uh, lose a lot of healing potential by working against it. At the objectives on the map as a whole, you can see that the pros have managed to, to take control of both teleporters now. So they have full control of the map and most of the uh, available souls. Oh, in the there. bottom here, Ace of the versus two, uh, they are... Okay, Ace books it. Macho yep. comes in to save him from behind and it looks like Ace of going to be able to heal up. Macho is just going to tank it up. Uh, it and seem Macho chases them away. So the devs back out of this fight. They wisely back out of this fight to... Uh, they wisely back out of the fight so that they can capture other objectives. And we are hearing from some viewers who are watching the stream that the uh, what you're seeing is not always what we're seeing. That's because we are in the United States of America right now. And we, we don't have direct control over the viewer, but we can try to give you an idea of what's happening across the map. It looks like another dev just went down in the middle to... And there's another 1v1 happening there. And the troll has spawned. All right, so Tef... Tefg... He is wandering down into the bottom right corner of the map, so he is about to come into conflict with Macho Man. So let's see how he fares. He might. Oh, okay, so Macho show. Man he does get the ward up in time and tries uh, to teleport out. Teleport got nerfed recently. It doesn't have nearly the range that he used to have, but Macho Man is now dealing with a frog mortar here on the side. But he is taking it down quite quickly. He's going to uh, reap the souls the and then. Uh, so the pros are still ahead of the devs by 50 points. It seems like the pros have picked up on this game mode really quickly. Oh yeah, a nice nice lightning into SFS, and Dorama also goes down, and it just seems like they're not able to stay alive. 
So Teft, he is... He's gonna be super sneaky here. He is going to... Okay, I thought he was going to try and take on the effigy of Okay, moving into the, the top left here. We do have a fight that's happening over the uh, orc. What is that called? The shaman. The, the shaman, orc. the orc goblin shaman, I think it is. But Squapper is now in a fighting in a 1v2. Big chills coming in, and he just can't ward all those elements at once. It's too much for him. Tuffleg is back in the middle, and we do have a push coming into the bottom right. 1v3. Who's down there? Let's see. That's ACD. It would be ACD. <laughs> He's going down to, to test his metal against all of the devs. Does have a teammate trying to reinforce from behind. Those two devs are about to get caught in the middle. Walter Wolf coming in from behind. All right, so in the bottom here, the pros have sandwiched the devs, and uh, the it looks like the pros have the upper hand. Teft is going up against Dobby. He has the, the drop. The Dobby here, but Dobby, really nice ward swapping here to block out the damage. Macho Man coming in, getting a ton of lightning damage down onto Teft. Teft switches wards, puts down an oh, e bubble. A big, oh, a, oh, classic revive there, just in time. Dobby comes up alive. Some nice lightning from Macho, almost kills Dobby, but. <laughs> Macho, it seems it. to be. A good wall block. <laughs> So the devs are locked into uh, their effigy uh, area. It seems like uh, they're trying to break out here. Tef going toe to toe with Walter Wolf. This is, uh, this he needs like to get out of here. Point. I mean, Walter is uh, up. All right, so. Oh, the effigy takes a shot on Walter, but he didn't stay in long enough. And it looks like he's just going to block Tef inside the base. And Tef doesn't know what to do. He's he's caught. <laughs> and he's basically you, trapped. You can do it, Tef. I, we believe, we in believe in you. There's a teleporter to your left. If you just step on the teleporter, you'll be whisked away. We believe in you. It's just gonna keep trying to block. Walter Wolf is having a little too much fun just throwing those frost rocks, but now it's a 2v1. The question is, can I, okay, Walter Wolf pulls back. All right, so Tef has discovered the teleporter. He is teleporting to yeah. the orc right on top of the orc All right, he takes a oh, heap damage. of damage. His ward is going to heal him up a bit. Ace of the trying to come in, deal some damage. Ace of the is chasing down Tef. Tef, get out of there, you nice teleport. He's prioritizing the kill over the uh, points. Nice attempt at the water block there. Oh, that was um, haste. Uh, a nice ward, a decent ward swap. Tef, a nice knockdown, but it's not going to be enough. He goes oh, down here finish. to the mate, to Ace of these melee finish. He's in a lot of minions, so. Yeah, he's able to clear him out, no problem. So, looking at the counter at the top of your screen, we've got 150 points to 235. This is uh, not exactly a close match. And we've got four more coming after this. We're nine minutes into the game. Black Box, what do you think the devs have to do to turn this Well, I think the devs are going to have to start giving a lot more kills because I... <laughs> what's, our, what's our kill counter at? Let's take a look here. We're at... Uh, okay, oh, Nishagen is the oh, only developer to have scored a kill. He's 3 and 10. Dorma is at 0 and 10, Tefka is at 0 and 7, and Squapper is at 0 and 8. Meanwhile, on the other side, we've got Macho Man at 8 and 2, Walter Wolf is at 11 and 3, ACD is at 7 and 2, and Dobby coming in as a support is at 2 and 4. So, it's a little bit, you know... A little slanted. bit slanted. Yeah, a little bit. But, if this were the other game mode, uh, the, the pros would have won this, uh, would have won this match probably yesterday. I mean, if I were the developers, I would just be wishing for a for a best of best of. All right, so the developers are oh, they're are they doing something interesting here that the pros were not expecting? They're going for broke on the effigy uh, the, because the effigy shield is down. They can do they can put damage onto it, so they are leveraging their superior game knowledge here to get to kind of get a drop on the pros. Oh, the effigy does fire back. Walter Wolf able to pick up both kills, and on the opposite side, uh, Dobby is <laughs> camping the spawn here and keeping these developers stuck inside their base. You know, if the pros just get 20 more souls, they just have to capture 20 more souls, and they can go for... 17 now, it's getting closer. Yep, and then the the effigy for the oh, developers... Looking like he's in trouble. Oh, Tef getting some really nice he's damage pick down. Up a kill here. This could be Tef's first kill. <laughs> Come on, he's Tef. Cast some mind. Test AOE. Oh, okay, so not enough. Tef goes Tef down. With a great ward at the last second. Comes out with about one hit point. Doesn't go down. What a play. All right, so the pros are very, very close to having 300 souls. 
Their next soul is gonna do it. You think they've realized the win condition yet? All right, so they're just having fun getting kills. They maybe have uh -oh. a little. Uh oh, their base is about to go down. Looking for the top right. They're about oh. to lose it. An amazing push into the last second. And the developers pick up a win. <laughs> so the developers win it. With so four kills to do a quick math here. Uh, oh, wow. 32. Four to 32 kills, and the developers come up with a win regardless because of superior game knowledge. Black Box, I was what not a expecting that. What a finish. turnaround. Um, oh, wow. So maybe, <laughs> maybe the pros, that's Legion, maybe Legion will... Uh, go for the effigy a little bit more. That was an interesting strategy. I did not think the devs would win that one. I mean, it's it's almost as if they were having a little too much fun just getting kills, you know? And, and they didn't stop to think about, about where the game was going. This is not a game for fun. This is a serious PvP game. And the uh, the Legion, Legion, they've got to get it together for this next match because we've got four more we're talking about i mean in in the last tournament the esl tournament or even even well i mean the vlad tournament these guys were basically undefeated almost all the way through in the in the esl in particular they went all the way to the finals without dropping a game and then it was i think it was a it just went three two right back yep. and forth so we're talking about a team that almost never loses and they just dropped one to the developers in the game who proved that they could not kill them. <laughs> I mean, Miss Hagen got a couple of lucky ones, I think, but overall, I mean, the... And uh, Tef came really, really close. Very close, but not close enough. I mean, no, no cigar, no right? cigar. That's what we're saying here. Horseshoes and hand grenades. And it sounds like we're going back to the, uh, the official stream. So we're going to throw it back and we'll wait for the next game. To Heliana and her process with the community stuff, and she's been actually doing some good process so far. I'm, I'm seeing, I mean, I'm not a 3D modeler myself, but I, I'm seeing something that looks like a scarecrow-esque thing here. What, what What's the deal so far? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be your hand because you need to spin around and <laughs> I have need control. to spin the uh, the scene around in Maya. Well, yeah, we had a lot of ideas with um, books, and they wanted Jensen's hair, and I remembered <laughs> that he has like a really pretty emo fringe going on. I think. Aren't they called scene nowadays? I don't. I don't know. And to be cool, to be okay. Hip okay, he kids. has a really cool scene hair do going on, uh, but I'm not sure. I might just make it like a sort of. Um, a, a piece of hair that's been cut off and it might just be resting on this weird Timmy looking stuff or it might not even be a mannequin sort of stuff. It might end up being something completely different. Was well, that a slice of pizza on him? Yes, we've had like a lot of people wanting it to be a pizza slice on the stuff. I don't know what the joke is, but I'm, I mean, I'm here to do what you guys tell me to do. So it's a, it's a pizza. This is surprisingly heavy, by the way. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I will take. <laughs> I will. Uh, I can take it uh, in a second. I'm it's just okay. gonna move this book, make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So, okay. so take us through your workflow here. So you've been taking. Uh, you've been looking at the the Twitter feed and the forums. You've been mm -hmm. just taking random suggestions. Like what? Mm -hmm. How how do you select what to go after? Because I can imagine that you have more than book, hair, and pizza. Um, I also have that's a this is supposed to be a disco ball because I'm thinking like trans academy and I'm thinking like dancing and trans. Obviously, oh. a disco ball isn't that much trans. There should be more lasers um. and smoke and you know. Oh, we like could do DJ that. Set. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people are requesting rainbows because Stefan said the rain <laughs> that you, he makes rainbows. You could actually so like an LP that goes around them. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. That's also cool. So <laughs> I will definitely get this stuff over to Stefan afterwards, and he can rainbow the crap out of it. That's awesome. So what are you moving in after? I mean, as we see, you're kind of just doing blunt work here with the, the basic model. What's what's the, the bomb slash, I don't know, like Can vase looking thing there? This one? This one, this yeah. Thing. This is the, like the hair, the ta hair tassel that I was thinking. Like a ponytail? Yeah, a cut of ponytail. I was thinking oh. that rather than uh, giving it the whole hairdo. Um, I'm that not really, sense. I'm not really digging like the mannequin look. I don't want it to just be a mannequin. Um, you could have the ponytail on the like, lower end of the staff, so it's like a... a Tail, yeah, tail. yeah, maybe that like uh, uh, tape fun. it, uh, yeah, tape <laughs> it over there. So right now I'm just blocking out um, ideas, waiting for some feedback from you guys, um, and just um, yeah, 
So what's the next natural step for you? Are you just going to do like, okay, so when you do a stuff like this, you always start with just really blocky clunky models and then you kind of just refine things as you go along or do you do one item at a piece and kind of make it look awesome or how, what's your, what's your workflow here? Uh, my workflow is usually that I sketch something, uh, but I didn't bring my pen and paper or my tablet so I can't really uh, sketch and I also don't have the time to sit and sketch like a sketch can take an hour or two hours to just sit and because yeah, it takes uh, a quite some time to make uh, you know yes, professional in-game yes, staff. Yes, yes. An in -game staff takes like at least two days for me so um, obviously I'm just making things as fast as I can and putting them on this Abomination and no, I think it looks pretty nice so far. I mean, I'm looking for I'm the, the thing I'm most looking forward to now that you say disco ball is if you actually manage to get the lightning effects of that, like, like correctly. Yeah, yeah, because wouldn't it be awesome if when you run around with it, you kind of get the reflection thing so there's like small dots around you yes. and rainbow colors as yes. you move around. I mean, yes. it's kind of like a rainbow disco ball aura. I'm thinking in the, in the spirit of everyone being. Mm -hmm very intensely different in our community it kind yeah, of gives just yeah. the perfect crown so i'm i'm liking what i see so far i like that idea i might steal that i will tweet it to through. you and you'll be like oh it was in the twitter feed that means we can do it so yeah. for those of you who are new to the stream you can actually tweet to hashtag whiz wars launch um and then you can feed helena suggestions live and she will take them into consideration mm -hmm. as she creates the stuff and this stuff when it's done is going to be in the game so you can play with it and buy it and i don't know fill around with it and punch you, know, you can't really punch people with it because you punch people no, with the weapons but no but you can uh but you know you you cast your spells with it so you will look really really cool with it so what are some suggestions you don't want to see um i would or don't or won't follow i won't follow i won't follow stuff like um i've gotten a lot of suggestions like add the animals from the bugs like oh. when, when when there's a bug or crash in the game you usually get a uh, like hagfish or a marlin how does and a I, hagfish look what is that? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. We can Google it. Let's Google what a hagfish is because I'm not okay. sure. This might be not safe for work. Let's see what This happens. might be not safe. Oh, oh gross. What? That is what is gross. That? Like a, I don't know. What, is that like an underwater leech thing? Yeah, I it, think it. It looks like a mul, mul, uh, no, mulvad. What's, what's the name in, in English um, for that? A mole. A mole, yeah. yeah with like all those, mole. Maybe they have really good underwater noses. Maybe. That is disgusting. That is gross. Um, I don't are want to they, put that on are, the staff. No, don't put, don't put a hagfish on the staff. I'm not going to put a uh, hagfish on the staff. Uh, because obviously the, the, the best scenario is that we don't have any bugs, so nobody will get that anyway. And another thing is that I really want to highlight the community with the staff, not necessarily the game, because then it would just be like I know, a wizard robe on a staff. Yep. That's, that's the wizard wars, like wizard or magica. I want it to be a community staff that has the essence of the community and the community jokes and the community references. Community, so, community, so, community. So, so what, what's your favorite like community in, inside joke or reference that, you know, every time you see them in the forums, you're like, oh, oh you <laughs> players, you're um, so funny, so I, dank I, memes. <laughs> I usually like how, um, like how you can see the people's personalities. I'm more into that because I don't think we have like one joke that we're always, oh, the soon joke. Yeah, the soon trademark joke. Wait, isn't that like kind of trademarked by other companies? Or we have we grabbed that? <laughs> have we stolen that? Uh, I, we haven't stolen it, thing. but like anytime anyone makes a suggestion, we usually replied, "Oh, it's we're working on it," or "Soon, it will be done soon." Yeah. Um, it always works, though. I mean, you don't have to invest yourself into things. You can just be like, oh, "Soon, you know, that's soon. gonna happen." Uh, but yeah, yeah. So the soon joke is funny, and I like that one. So wouldn't it be funny if we never released the stuff? Yeah. Yes. It would <laughs> it's just. It's gonna say, be done soon, um, guys. Yeah. Exactly. On the um, uh, on the in in the front end of the game, uh, where we have the carousel with that that spins all the news. It's coming soon. The community staff, and then it never comes. All right. So uh, if we go back into the the, the program, what what are you actually you're working in Maya here? Yeah. How long have you been working in Maya? Like, how, how comfortable are you in it? I see you um, spinning around. I mean, from my perspective, it looks really cool because you yeah. change things and you press hotkeys and it looks really professional, but you might just be, you know, doing pleb stuff. How, how skilled are you in Maya? Um, how skilled I am? Well, just, you know, obviously just look at my stuff in the game. That's oh, right. usually, cool. yeah, I uh, know. You're right, I, I figured. <laughs> did, you, did you do the flamethrower stuff? Which one is is it the uh, uh, the, the blowtorch? Yeah, the blowtorch. No, I didn't. I made the Valkyrie stuff one, the one the dragon head. Oh, did did you do the the blade of heart light? Heart light. No, that's stuff on because uh, there's a rainbow version of that. So yeah, that's him. 
All right. So um, uh, I'm going to actually let you work for a while now. Okay. Um, Thanks. Cool. Yay. And, and uh, once again, as mentioned, you can just Twitter suggestions or you can go to the Wizard Wars forums. And I suppose yeah. it's going to be a highly bumped thread where you can suggest things kind of more in length because sometimes 140 character doesn't cut it, which means exactly. that you, if, yeah. if you want to write an essay about how the staff should look and why and its stats, we, we would be really happy. And I'm yeah. sure you'll be glad to read that. <laughs> I actually would, to be perfectly honest, because I'm going to work with the staff a few days after the stream. It's not just going to be during the okay, stream. So you're going to like finalize it after that? Yeah, to make it pretty, because I mean, look at this thing. What? This that, that, that's like ready for the game, <laughs> production quality. Okay. All right. With no further ado, I'm going to cast back to the casters, and we're going to head into game two. Yep. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is Black Box and Cole. And we are going to go into game two of I'm not sure if I'm going to make it to my two o'clock class, so... I'm thinking probably not black box. Yeah, so um, I guess I'm going to have to skip class for today, but you guys are worth it. Um, I, I love each and every one of you. You're all great people, except for the ones who do criminal type things, which I hope nobody does, but... Uh, <laughs> we are. I don't really know where you were going with I'm, that black <laughs> So, game two. Game Tol, two. What, do, what do the devs have to do to procure another win? Well, they won the first game. Right. So They're going to have to win more. Let's review what they did. They died a lot. Right. Right. They were behind in Souls Captured. Right. And then they killed the effigy. Right. So, same thing. Same thing. I mean, I feel like the dying a lot is probably doable. That's that's probably I think that a goal is that can, their go-to strategy. A, will be their <laughs> trademark strategy once again. So again, we have a slightly different swap here. It looks like there are pings going down in the middle of the map from the pro team, and they are grouping up as a four group. Nope, now they're splitting up into a two-two. Okay, so we still got a two-two split here in the top right and in the bottom left. Both teams are splitting up into groups of two, probably for the healing. Interesting. Let's let's follow the devs here in the in the on the left side and just see how they choose to deal with I mean they're the ones that have practiced, right? Right. Beams. They're going straight in for the beams. Looks like Yeah, took almost no damage. So they're so gonna capture that teleporter yep, they... and on the right hand side we have the pros doing the same thing. They took a little bit more damage. I mean, it seems like the, the devs are at least better at PvP. So in the top you mean left, PvE, PvE, yeah. PvE. So in the, the top left corner of the map, uh, the pros or the devs are taking the camps. But Dobby comes in from behind. We're in the top left side of the map, and Nishagen is really low. Dobby's doing a one v two, and for now he's oh, oh he and goes the devs down. get first blood once again. Teth, I think, grabbed that one. Still in the top left, we do have a pro player following in from behind. Macho Man is mad about that kill, and he wants to turn it around. But he just took a ton of damage from... Oh, the Shaman, oh, wow. the Goblin... Oh, wow. What is his name? Fallest. 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 The Goblin Shaman put a heap of damage down onto Macho Man, and now he's locked in a 1v2. Uh, so we... Oh, he, he pushed him off. So, him off. okay, so... Looks like they're opting to go back for the back to the farming. The, the developers are ahead in Souls by about 8. Nine now. Ish, eight ish. Death magic, which is going to put a bunch of damage down on Dobby, except the heals were coming in. <laughs> and Teth goes down. So, moving down to the bottom side, we've got a 1v1 happening between ACD and Squapper. And it's about to be reinforced from a dev on the right hand side. He's coming in with a rock, but ACD puts up the rock ward just in time. That oh, Squapper, the pros. <laughs> Squapper uh, gets knocked down onto uh, his back. And, uh, and there he's looking to finish this kill. You can see he throws down the shield to block the healing from. Nice other... play by Acevi. That shield that <laughs> Toll was talking about combined with some self cast lightning. Oh, he's giving Domibras a Ooh, good he chase. He just frost himself with, because of a nice wall. And now he's caught inside the minions. He's going to have to clear him before he can go back in. So over by the troll, Macho Man is trying to take him on. Uh, he's using a beam, a water beam. A water beam. He's following it up with lightning, lightning. And this is a 1v1. He seems to be coming out on top. The troll's name is Pontus. I don't know if that changes each time, but uh, Macho Man is doing really quite Macho well. Macho Man here. is showing Pontus who's boss. And this is only the second time that he has played this, and he just cleared that all on his own. That is going to swing the soul count in the direction of the professionals in a significant way. 
All right, and that oh, this Agen takes one down and goes down himself to Ace of these uh, melee, but it was a 1v2 and he took him down with it. In the bottom right hand side, it looks like we're playing a little bit of tag around the wall. Walter, Ooh, Walter Wolf gets a big rock hit on Squabber, but Squabber pops the haste magic and runs away. He's burning. I'd like to see him throw a little bit of a, yep, there we go. Okay, heal up Squawker. The 1v1 is now happening between Walter Wolf and Dorama down here in the bottom right. We'll have to see if Dorama gets reinforced. He's probably gonna want to switch away from that ward because he's taking he a ton himself. of damage. Oh, oh please so run. The ice goes right through the rock. Uh, RQR goes right through rock walls, unable to protect yourself, can't block it with Walter Wolf putting the hurt down onto Tef. Tef trying to heal up. It's not going to be enough. Nice Walter Wolf here, takes him down. A shield knocks down Squapper. Squapper tries to go in with the fire rock. Okay. But it looks like Walter's just going to keep him blocked in here. Yep, so this, is, uh, Walter. this is a little bit sad and embarrassing for Squapper, but you know he's going to try his best. Puts up a nice ward there, but gets hit, pushed back. Oh. oh, Walter's just being mean now. Unfortunate here on timing side. on the Orc Warrior for Squabber. Into Squabber. He's, this, is, this is called water locking in the professional community. It looks like Squabber's going to try to make a run for it, but oh. Nice play by Walter Wolf. Very too. nice play. And he picks up the kill. And, and the teleporter. The and the teleporter. Really just very clean. Now moving down into the bottom side, we've got a 1v1 happening between Dorma and AC. So Ace of the tried to lock Dorma against the wall. Dorma threw on his boots, started running real fast, and now he's trying to book the heck out of there. Well, if he's not trying to book the heck out, he should really be booking the heck out because I don't know if he is going to be getting this. Good damage with the beam. Yep, nice. Pistol the beam right before the shield. Ace of the pops a haste and makes a run for it. Oh, a nice rock spin behind. Nice knockdown followed by nice lightning followed by mines that weren't quite as nice. This Hagen is just far Oh, right. Ace of the gets a big rock onto the back of this Hagen's head. He should be able oh, to close this kill out. Again. When will they <laughs> learn? This Hagen putting on his boots, running real fast. Who doesn't know that that heal ward that's up on this Hagen right now is W E W, and it gives you about 50 health back per tick. It's pretty insignificant when compared to an effective ward that you could put up. But they're the developers, right? They know what they're doing. Sure. So. Pros, Legion, are going up against the troll. I think they should be able to... Okay, the so troll the troll resets. In. He's going back to his place. His health didn't reset, though, so that means that the pros are going to be able to... To, 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 to take do it. Out. Yeah, I, I like think they got this. Developers are spread around the map and trying to pick up the extra souls, which are around. Now, if we look at the score count at the top, you can see that the pros have pulled basically a 50-point lead in terms of souls. One of the shields is down for the developers, and Walter Wolf is holding two people inside the base just for fun. I think this is unwise on the part of the devs to uh, stay locked in. Well, oh. there... Oh! We've got a meteor shower being cast inside the developer's base. So I think the pros want to start doing damage to this effigy. They picked up the strategy that the devs use against them, and now they're just trying to... They're main, main healing in the back, but Dobby's taking a lot of damage. We'll have to see if they can heal him up. Okay, so Walter Wolf is in the back. Macho's taking quite a bit of damage. The heal's a nice hit. heal save from Walter Wolf. He's doing everything he can to keep his teammates He's up. He's getting low, but he, he moves behind the effigy, so he can't receive any healing. All right, so now the uh, pros are they're just trying to do all of the damage that right, they can. Trying to but... back out now without losing anybody. They're just healing each other. They've done a fair amount of damage to the point, and it looks like somebody else, yeah, Squapper went down on the right-hand side. I uh, think the pros, the pros want to just lock this game out. Don't want to leave anything well, to nice chance. Ice knocked down, but Walter Wolf goes down. Dobby gets hit by a Portal John coming in from the sky, and now Isidine comes in to reinforce Macho Man. It was a nice push, but I feel like the effigy wasn't weak enough yet. Nope, not quite, but they did keep the devs locked into the base, and the devs weren't able to take souls, and they netted damage. So that was a net win, I think, for the pros, and they're going for it again. Yep, they're going to, they're, they're doing beam damage because they can stay further back and still do healing. Damage. They can do safe healing and safe beam damage, but... Man taking a big hit. It seems like, from what we can tell, the effigy is not wardable. Oh, wow. Macho Man just gets obliterated by the effigy. Yeah, this Hagen was distracting Ace of the from healing, so uh, this Ace of the could 
not heal his buddy who was going down to the If you cut to the right hand side, there is a 1v1 happening between Squapper and Walter Wolf. It should last at least two or more seconds. Squapper, <laughs> Squapper to goes melee. for a super spinny melee. Didn't do anything. So the devs are trying to sneak some extra souls in while the pros are trying to go straight for the Effigy. I mean, if, if I were the pros at this point, I would probably try to lock down that teleporter on the left-hand side. Yep, I think... Actually, both teleporters are open to the developers. It's it's how they're getting players out, and they... It looks like they were able to send someone out to the far right side as well. The, the pros are kind of zeroing in a little bit too much on trying to camp them in their base. I think the pros have given up on that strategy. They are now trying to take the objectives that are scattered out through the nice map. They're going for the Wolf. troll right Another now. Another heal ward for Dorama. I think the troll is going to go down. They should be able to get oh, all wow. of these souls. That's a huge swing again. Just further starting to snowball their advantage. Well, I guess they're back up to 50. Again. Oh, AZD goes down to Nisagen. Nice job. You yes. just have to wonder, was he paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> Macho Man just clearing out some uh, goblins. Same uh, for Lightning, death. death, and Fire Beam. Oh, okay. Actually, was so, that an AFF? Uh, oh, oh, okay. AZD. In the top side, and it looks like Tefl is trying to do a little damage to the effigy, but... Okay, so he, he did a little bit. That was something. Nobody gets the kill when the effigy takes it. Ah, oh, shoot. So it doesn't count. ACD going in for the... Oh, but lightning down storm. here in the bottom oh, left. and they've cast a lightning storm. Oh, nice play from Do Durama. He threw Dobby, Dobby into the Heal wards, the though. They're just... Too much. <laughs> we have to wonder, you know, Black Box, we've got five games to play. By the end, do you think the uh, the devs will still be casting heal wards? I think so, Toll. I, I think this is so ingrained in their psyche that they will. It makes you the wonder that the, the in-house development meta must be really different from what's happening <laughs> in the community. Squapper, oh, oh goes down. Oh. So the pros are going to just scoop up these souls and they're closer to uh, taking down the effigy. The pros were able to narrow the soul advantage a little bit there, so it's only 223 to 188. That's a right, little but closer the pros than the still have them locked into the base. I'll be taking effigy damage. Walter Wolf pushing in on the top, turtling, and some nice light. Walter Wolf is pretty far in. He's going to take some effigy damage here. And lots of heals coming in on Dobby. It looks like they're just going to focus the heals. Yeah, they're channeling a nice beam onto oh, the this, Effigy. This is not looking good for the Sagan The Sagan just went down. Uh, the devs are just locked in their base. They can't Oh, do a, a meteor shower, a though. Great Coming meteor in. shower. It's going Push to out. gather the pros. It looks like Walter Wolf is going for the tanking, but he's going to be getting hit by the Effigy, which is not blockable on a ward. He's now caught an attempted Portageon kill. A push on a geezer, but not enough. Walter Wolf is low. Heals, yeah, heals, and uh, Macho Man oh. saves Walter Wolf. Again. And but it looks like the effigy is going to pick it by up the this effigy. time. It looks like the developers, well, the, the pros are really sort of trying to focus in here, but they haven't weakened the base sufficiently yet. If they would just capture a few more souls, the effigy would be... Well, the effigy is actually fairly weak right now. It's only shooting one projectile at a time. And I'd like to point out, Black Box, that the developers have two players outside of the base. They just picked up the Orc Warrior on the right side, and I think they have someone working on the troll in the middle. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is a big swing. They're, they have caught up in souls at Yeah, they point. just have to keep uh, capturing souls. Once it, they get the pro, once they get up to 300 souls. Those heal wards get you every time. <laughs> get out of there. <laughs> okay. This time, it'll keep you alive. All right, here we go. Back down to the bottom left. And we have Walter Wolf and Dobby pressuring the effigy, trying to put damage. Dobby is coming out for the pros. It's going to put a heap of more pressure onto the devs. Tefagu is doing a good job putting down uh, a shield to try to block the beams that were hitting the effigy. But it, it looks like the... Oh, hold on. Let's move to the top right corner. This could be a base race we've got here. Both effigies are taking a lot of damage. It's going to come down to which team... I think the devs, the devs are is probably going to go uh, down yeah, first, but yeah, yeah. I think the pros of but they're they're doing quite in well. the bottom left. It is a three v one now, so both teams have firmed it up. The soul count is exactly equal. Walter Wolf oh, popped his stasis team, magic. A team kill coming in from oh Walter Wolf. How many Wolf's stasis team. magic does he have? I'm I'm not sure, but he's keeping three devs busy. Oh. Okay, finally, finally they're able to take him down. They're going to branch out. 
the rest of the map. Because of him holding that point, though, the devs have managed to pull 14 points ahead in the souls. The next, the next uh, team, basically whichever team can get into the other base, they're going to have to start playing defense, though. This is a point where if you have enemies that sneak behind you, you could lose your effigy, which means the teleporters become kind of important. Yeah, I think the devs are going to... Oh, the devs are... <laughs> they're trying to rush down the pro's effigy. Uh... I don't know if... Yeah, this is kind of... Dorm is trying it, to get in. It looks completely different when the devs try to press into the pro's base. And for anyone watching, the most powerful spell in Magic of Wizard Wars is healing. Uh, the dub 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 heal beam is the strongest spell in the game in terms of its ability to put hit points back on a player. The downside to the heal ward, and I know I keep harping on it, is that it actually makes it so your teammates cannot heal you. You can't heal yourself and your teammates can't heal you. Your only source of healing comes from that that heal over time. So oh, so the devs are trying to bunker down to save the, their... Oh, so... This oh. lightning magic is dealing damage to the effigy. There's nothing the devs could do about oh, that. A great meta innovation right there. <laughs> they couldn't stop it. That that caught us all by surprise. Yeah, I think the the devs might be patching that one later. Now I do have to say, looking at the score count, uh, Miss Hagen was able to pick up a few more kills. So this game is over, and we're gonna wrap it up and throw it back to John over at the. I don't know what they're doing. What are they doing? <laughs> Whatever they're doing, Whatever they're it's doing. back to them. Back to them. Uh, we are doing... Oh, that, that comes out wrong. I was going to say we're doing the cosplayers, but no. <laughs> we are talking to the cosplayers to see their progress on the Wizard Wars staff, and it's, it's actually starting to make sense now. I have changed my mind, and it, it's definitely not a fence. It's, uh, Kimberly, what are we actually doing here? I think yeah, you have the microphone. Yep. It's shaping up to be something from the game. Yeah. Uh, at least I hope and f think so. <laughs> um, Johanna is gluing everything together at the moment, all the fence pieces. Um, and hopefully my reference from before that you didn't like will ah. start to make sense. You mean that the rest of the sane universe didn't like? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so basically you're doing a frost staff from the game. You have a kind of reference picture up here that looks, I mean, it kind of does look like it, which I find impressive. So what's your plan here? You're, you're obviously going with some kind of foam-ish material. Um, is this like what you do with the LARP weapons from 2, the soft foam thing? Yeah, this is craft foam. Uh, you can get it in almost any store. Like a lot of cosplayers also use um, Ligundelag, uh, you know, What's it called? I don't know, soft foam thing. Yeah, soft foam that you use when you go camping and sleep on. So that's basically what we're using for the base and texture of everything. And yeah, just cutting out all the pieces, gluing them together and try and make some sort of sense. And what's the next step after this? Are you going to go into coloration or what, what's, uh, what's the process? I mean, you're obviously, I mean, not super far away, but kind of far away from the, the final picture. So take us through your thought process here. Yeah, the thought process has been, uh, Johanna has been drawing out all the pieces and cutting them out. I've been gluing them together and uh, Herman, he's been killed. Uh, yeah, he, he just disappeared. He just disappeared. He's probably going to be back for the next summit, though. No, yeah, yeah. Um, he's actually painting all the pieces that are oh, already done. Oh, okay. So, so he, he's the, the artistic type here. Yeah, that goes cause, into because you're gonna you're gonna try to recreate it as close as possible, right? Exactly. So we're wor working in like three different different steps and just taking it all the process through. Awesome. So do you think you're gonna end up kind of similar to the the staff looking in game, or? Mm, I think so. Yeah. Most important question: Are we getting this staff to the office after? Because we are in dire need of actual Wizard War staffs that aren't just bought from some random shop in Denmark. You might have to take them out of someone's dead hands, but yeah. Okay, so I hear you're not going to work for us this summer then. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate, but I'm, I'm hoping to see it in the office because this looks like it could actually fit into our mannequin's hand too, compared to the one that's kind of loosely gripped by him right yeah. now. No, this will definitely be in the mannequin at the office uh, hand. You're, you're doing a good he's job. If he's hands, you'll take it out oh, of Oh, no, no, I don't want to mess with the mannequin. He's scary. Exactly. And he's dead, so. Have you been watching the game, by the way? Yeah. Or, 
how does it feel? They were 1-1. I actually felt like the devs had a fair chance of winning this too, which is very surprising. I was expecting the pros to just run them over, but it looks to be kind of semi-fair. Yeah, but at the same time, are they doing all their best at it or are they giving them a chance? No, I'm going to take it as they do their best. I mean, otherwise, otherwise it's kind of embarrassing. Otherwise, this next game, they have to step up their game and just show what they can do. Yeah, but uh, I think we'll see more of them. Or they're maybe just figuring out the meta. Exactly. So, Johanna, how do you feel about the process of this? Is this going as expected? Do you think you're going to make time? Yeah, I think so. I think um, we're doing good. Um, usually, you know, it takes a lot longer because you're only one person. But since we're three, uh, it's going well. Yeah, I think we're going to make it. Uh, yeah, and Herman is out, you know, painting and... We're just cutting and gluing, and, you know, yeah. Do you often work with this graph film material? I mean, you mentioned earlier that you classes. Is this one of the ground steps you tell cosplayers? Like, you can work with foam. Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, there are so many different kinds of foam. Like, we're using craft foam. And there are, like, ground sheets and uh, yeah, protection mats and yoga mats and uh, whatnot. There are so many different kinds of foam you can work with, and it's pretty cheap as well. Uh, usually work with something called warbla, which is a thermoplastic, which you cover it with. Okay. But that's a lot to more kind of expensive. strengthen it. Yeah, and yeah, make it, it gets more... really hard. Because uh, cosplaying is kind of an expensive hobby if you is. want to make it right. Like uh, you only have one hobby if you're a cosplayer. <laughs> and everything is made of foam. Because I've I've um, touched cosplayer stuff before, and it's always surprisingly light, even though it looks like metal. So it's kind of an art yeah, there, I guess, um, to replicating a material. You really have to make it light because um, I mean you're gonna wear it for like an entire day. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's gonna be tough if you make it. I, I have a friend who makes it out of real metal, but that's like that's really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're gonna let you work for so quite some time more because we're gonna go back to you once again later and kind of check up on your process and hopefully you're gonna be closer to a finished result then, which is exciting. I'm looking forward to this now that I have a mental image, uh, and I'm gonna take it back to the casters for game three and hopefully you're gonna see some pros being even more prosy this time. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we are back again. This is Black Box. This is Tolerosia. And we are going to test another game. Uh, hopefully, the score! The score is currently 1-1. One to one. Uh, The devs won the first one. The uh, the pros, the Legion, won the second one. And uh, maybe, maybe the devs can win another game. No, so, did the devs die as much the second game as they did the first game? I think they died a few times more, but they increased their kills. So in game one, the uh, developers were able to pick up, I think it was three kills for the entire game. They were all Nishagen. In game two, Nishagen increased his kills to six. And one of the other players, I can't remember which one, might've been Tefk. I think Tefk got it. Picked up one. So they increased their kills to seven. The kills on the professional team was actually more than I could count before the, uh, the game went down. But I, I believe it was greater than 40. Um, I think it was in the, it was either in the high 30s or, or low 40s. So we're, we're definitely running a kill advantage to the professionals, but, I mean, there was a lot of damage on their effigy. Yeah, so the, the pros, uh, they started using a new strategy. <laughs> they threw um, magics down onto the effigy. Uh, the Oh, okay, so we are going into the next game. I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say the, the pros are advantaged here, at least as you were saying in terms of kills. They seem to be doing a bit better. The devs give do give them a run for their money, though. Some polite good luck have fun coming in from ACD. These are very courteous players, the professionals. They, uh, they know how to play a clean match. And it looks like we're about to get started. We'll just have to see if they split up the same way. The pros are already opting, they're already showing us, oh, okay, I think we're seeing different splits across the board. No, uh, still 2-2. Nope, still 2-2. Two, two. They're leaving Macho Man to pick those up. Yeah, they're, each side is picking up uh, all of the imps they can. Both sides are going for, oh, a Teleport little bit of a control. divergence here. Ace the is going across the middle of the map. Down. Where are you going, Ace of the? Oh, Ace of the is coming. Ace of the. Oh, big hit on this Hagen. Oh, and the pistol oh, the pistol from kill. Ace of the. First blood goes to Ace of the. A clutch kill. I don't think this Hagen saw it coming. I, 
uh, it. <laughs> I don't know if the stream saw it. It happened so fast. I don't know if we got there in time. We're moving down to the bottom right, and it looks like Macho Man is doing a 1v1 like, with Squapper. Squapper is opting to pop haste and make a run for it. Yep, Squapper puts on his little booties and try. Okay, so Squapper, uh, get out of there. I, I think Macho Man is going to win this one. Just heal up. We do have, put on your WEW. We do have 1v1 happening in the top left. It looks like we've got Dobby is taking a lot of damage from Nice heal Tefka. from Tef. He's trying to tank it up. He's using the classic W-E-W-E-W -E -W -E -W <laughs> in order to spam heals on himself. And Walter Wolf comes in from behind. Nice finish from Walter Wolf. Dorama is in trouble now. He... We'll just have to see if he can get his heal ward no. up in time. No, he was unable to. So, uh, kill advantage to... Oh, Ace of the... Got another, another kill. One. We didn't I... even get to see it. Just farming those... Uh, so Ace of the is doing something interesting here. He is uh, taking, he is maintaining control of this camp and cutting off reinforcements. But uh, it seems like, as I said, it he started Ooh, doing oh, a lot of damage. Oh, able to get rocks on We're looking at ACD here in the in the left hand side where we've got a three v two. We're about to be reinforced from the right hand side, and the orc warden did just spawn. Looks oh, like Walter, Walter Wolf, Wolf was ready for it. It, he's. I don't know if he knows how strong this thing is. I don't think he can do it. I don't alone. know if he can do it. We'll just have to see. It's gonna. It's gonna pat back soon. Yep. And yep, then it's, it's gonna, gonna lose it. Yeah. And then oh, it heals it's back to heal full. back up. That's frustrating. Uh, Walter Wolf. Uh, oh. Uh, I don't know what that. I'm was. not sure what that was, but I think he needs a new strategy here. Uh, the new strategy should should be grabbing a buddy and uh, coming back later. Meanwhile. Oh, oh wait, wait. wait. Oh, Walter, Walter Wolf, Wolf goes, goes down. down. <laughs> a nice porta potty getting dropped on AC, pushing him in next to the the orc warrior. He does take a bunch of damage. It looks like Tefka has the right ward this time, which is great to see. Trying to do damage. Walter Wolf comes in with no nope. teleport, not and happening. they get burned down. All right, so Macho Man is running uh, Ace of these game. He's cutting off, re trying to cut off reinforcements. It looks like he picked a kill up on the Sagan. He's running to the middle. He's yet they're force on the kill here. They're, they're grabbing gonna, the troll. Yeah, they're gonna try to do a big swing here of souls. Uh, this would basically we've been even, and actually the developers are slightly ahead up to this point. But that's gonna put that's gonna put them back into the lead. Yeah, so the pros are ahead. only maintaining a slight. Uh, Advan or a slight soul advantage here. Walter, Walter Wolf, Wolf just fighting Squapper here <laughs> in the bottom middle. Oh, oh, not gonna oh, last long. Oh, you, it's. I mean, you can even see the way that how well these pros are coordinated. Walter Wolf had a lightning ward on himself so that his teammate could cast lightning on the enemy and he wouldn't receive damage. Just yeah. great plays from. Yeah, him. really well played from the pros. Even in the two v one, you can. Now uh, we're up see in the that. in the two v one up in the top. Macho Man is fighting Tefka and Nishagen. He's trying to just tank. And, and push out. Tef tries to do a teleport knockdown, but Macho Man had the ward up. Tef is so the devs up. were able to pick up a 2v1 kill, so they are able to kill people. I'd say they're getting better. Yeah, they're getting... With, well, as I Dorma mean, goes as Zorma goes down, uh, they are maintaining... Uh, the Well, the devs are maintaining a closer soul count this time yep and looking at the overall push here we've got a lot of green the developers on the right hand side of the map they're trying to push in and, and get a quick kill on monster man we'll have to see if he can turtle it he's in, we're in the top right he's running back yep, in to get he's... defense from his effigy nice well played by man. using the qed which is the water rock uh when you blow it up it explodes and pushes you back it's a great turtle oh nisagen is going on a suicide mission here i'm not sure what he wanted out of that one but it's almost like he lost control of his keyboard <laughs> <laughs> maybe he spilled some grape drink on it Tefka picks up a lot of souls there some nice pve farming great and it looks Great like job, the developers Tef. are able to get both teleporters now. So the developers have picked up both teleporters. So the developers ha should have a bit of a map advantage here in terms of traveling around, getting the big, uh, the big soul count. Still behind in the soul count though. They're down by about 13. Macho Man's trying to pick up the orc shaman in the in the right hand side. He does get it. Doesn't go to pick up the teleporter though. And we do have the troll respawning in the middle. A kill was just picked up in the top left. It's a 2v1. I'm not sure if this is a 2v1 that Nishagen wants, but he's he's yeah, pushing for uh, it anyway. Nishagen should probably run away. Uh, he's going up uh, against lightning two. Into, into frost lightning, or uh, into, uh, ice into frost yeah, lightning, Nisagen, say. Get, get out. Nice rock. Nishagen trying to run now. I'm not sure what that Still was, figured out what and that it spell is. didn't help. It looks like Dobby's just kind of giggling yep, now. So yep. that was 
An ill-advised uh, 1v2. There is nothing from the game there. Tef going full man mode. Maybe switch wards. I know... Oh! Can he pick it up? Can he pick it up? He might be able to grab... Oh, he's there's... He's gonna get the souls. He's trying he to get him. He gets a couple. Does, yeah, he gets a few, so it's not a complete loss. The soul count is still pretty even. Dorma trying to reinforce from behind. Oh, he gets a nice, nice bit of damage. Walter Wolf is a little bit low. Totally missed on that spell there, but Walter Wolf is, is caught in the middle. And it doesn't seem to bother him very much. Not at all. He just kind of tanked right through it. Yep. And, and the Macho Man are getting destroyed. Uh, all dope. three dead. Hey. Three for nothing. The pros have complete control of the map now. So what are they going what to do? They do? So they it? are grabbing the Warden. Uh, we have recently learned that this is a boss that takes uh, a buddy. And uh, it looks like that one. We see well. pings coming down on the right-hand side. So the developers are wrapping around again. He looks like he's going to try to push. Squappers on the right side is going to try yeah, to push and pick up this Yeah, he's just going to sneakily jump. pick up a Goblin Shaman. Nice water knockdown there. No big deal. No big. Oh, and uh, Macho Man in the middle with of his map. following. He zaps. Mo okay. Oh, Ooh. he just killed just... his imp followers. So... Uh, that was a learning moment for Macho Man, I think. We do have in the bottom left-hand side a 2v3 happening. Dobby and Walter Oh, Wolf. nice rock going Maybe down two, on the Teth. HD gets a little low, but his wards are right, and his team is able to heal him up in time. Walter oh. Wolf's pushing in. He's going to get smashed by the effigy. Nice uh, nice bubble shield from Nisagin. Uh, Walter Wolf dispelled it right away, oh, though. But the heal's coming down on tried to cut Wolf. the beams, but they were unable to. Tefka doing a nice job getting in the way. Of oh, the Meteor beam. Storm coming down. And that's going to be a lot of kills. Dobby and Walter both go down, as well as Tefka and Dorama. So Ace of the is going to just back off and farm up the goblins. Uh, didn't it was nice enough wall to... block there by Nisagen. Yeah, nice block. Oh, knockdown going down onto Nisagen. He's got a stop Ooh, chance. Nice geyser push, which didn't do a whole do lot. Much, but, you know, it's a... Something. Good to use the magic, gotta use it for something. The troll has respawned in the middle. Walter Wolf is farming in the top left. We do have a 2v1 happening in the right hand side. Macho Man versus Tefka. Macho Man getting a little bit low. He should probably Swapper. heal himself up. All right, so Macho Man just put a ton of damage down onto Squapper. Squapper is not prepared to deal with this fight. Macho Man oh, was just the rotations right were through solid. his defense. Every time Squapper changed his ward, Macho was hitting him with something else. That's really what makes Wizard Wars stand above a lot of other games these days. It's your ability to think ahead of your opponent. It's like chess, but really fast. Or like a fighting game. Like, like a fighting game. Blocks, mind games, they're all here. Dobria knocking down. Dorm, Dorm, Dorma, Dorma, <laughs> knocking Dobby. Oh, Dobby going for a knockdown. He missed it, it but, but gets a huge mine. A lot of damage from those PVE. Dobby opting for the uh, the self warding on the death mines and just using them to obliterate the uh, the minions. The pros, as is common, have pulled ahead by about 30. If they're able to pick up this troll, they're going to pull, I'd say, another 30 or so ahead. Or maybe. Yeah. I think it's like 15. 15, 20, something like that. Oh, but Squapper with oh, eight Squapper. steals a bunch of them. Sneaks five out away Great from the, from the middle there. Or away from the pros. And on the top right, we've got Dorama just farming. And they do throw a ping down on their opponent's base. So they oh, and the Macho helps Squapper grab those uh, goblins. Macho is out rotating Squ Squapper. He should be able to pick this kill up easy with a couple swings of his sword. The devs went for a little bit in. of damage. They got a little bit. They got a little bit. But uh, they're still down by about 40 souls. Looks like oh, something Tefka somehow managed to pull a lot of things on top of him. Finally, the the pros have managed to take control of one of the teleporters. We do have two people pushing in, and they all just left. They're not going to be able to get back in time. So the question is, can the developers heal each other and do enough damage? Oh, this is going down very quickly. They just have to heal each other and stay on their feet and keep the come damage on, Squabber, coming out. You can do it. You can do it. And it looks like the, the pros are trying to come back in time. Yeah, so uh, Macho Man coming back to save the day as a, a, a bubble shield coming out. Dobria running interference. Barely. They're hiding behind oh, the FG. and they both go down. They did get a fair amount of damage. That was a lot, was a lot of, of damage. damage. And the pros tried to do something similar. I think they got a good bit of damage. They are ahead in terms of effigy damage and in terms of souls. So the pros are maintaining Tefka a picks slight... up a kill on Walter Wolf, even in a 2v1. Tef... Trying to heal himself, but he has a heal ward up. Right. reduces its effectiveness. 
they gotta if they're trying if you're trying to heal yourself you should really really swap away from your heal ward because you're just cutting your own Dobby doing a nice job of turtling here in the bottom left versus uh, two players. It looks like one of the devs opted to teleport oh, away nice from the right Oh, nice knockdown side. from Dobby. He's doing a knockdown knock chain. Knockdown on Nishog and pushes them away. Wasn't able to apply the water, though, so the frost beam was not quite as effective. Oh, a self-shock oh, on Nishog and followed by two mines. Dobby, Dobby, Dobby drawing down the get up the ward in time? He can. He's running away. Oh, a self-revive coming down, putting a heap of health back onto himself. He has to, to deal, deal with these. And that looked pretty, that, that looked, looked pretty looked easy. Pretty yep, yep, good job, Dobby. Coming in from the side, ACD with the heals. Thank you for the heals, ACD. Your Dobby salutes you. Moving into the top right, Macho Man is really far behind in a 2v1. He's just trying to pop haste and get away. Macho Man in his natural environment fighting multiple players and at running. the same time. He ran far. Oh, he ran pretty far the too. question is, can he defend the effigies? Try I, to block the beam. This shouldn't be too difficult be for too Macho bad. Man. Uh, the devs are looking at paltry Paltry See, he's damage. using the, his own beam to block the beams of his opponents. Yeah, he's uh, using a little bit of beam misdirection, and both of the devs go down, putting very little damage down on to the effigy. Meanwhile, Dobby pushing in hard, dropping a uh, lightning, lightning on top of. Oh, that you can't. That block works. It. That works. It does work. That's that's a lot of damage that can't be blocked. Dobby putting on his uh, a very boots. clever use of the spells. All right, it looks like Walter Wolf throwing a revive down onto Tef and Ace of the, but Ace of the is running. Ace of the is running. So they wanted to keep him up, they wanted to keep him alive here. It looks like they're oh, just Ace trying to Oh, Ace of the going for the pistol finish. Well played, Ace of the. So three, there are three pros in the devs base, and the Swapper is trying to defend it by throwing oh, bubble shields up, but now they're on top of it. Yeah, they're just throwing mines down. The developer just died on the right hand side. And it looks like the pros, as they're pushing in, are going to try to take control back of the second teleporter as A well. A ton Smart of play. damage on the effigy. The devs the are city gets low. really reeling after that one. And the pros are still in it to win it. They're really starting to pull ahead. I, I think the their strategy for dealing damage to the effigy is starting to come together. ACD just fighting inside three people. Nisagin pushes Dobby away, so Dobby yeah. cannot oh. reinforce. A poor the potty, almost it's finished. Effigy can, yeah. Nice. Effigy Very can finish. Nice. They just had to hold him in place long enough for the turret to deal with it. So Forma the devs, the on the top left. what do the devs have to do to win this one, Toll? Well, they're pretty far behind. Uh, I think the real issue here is that the pros have, have learned that all they have to do is keep somebody back to defend and keep everybody else ahead. Their superior killing skills make it oh, very this is, difficult. That was a nice chill oh, from Dobre. He's about, he just dispelled his own cold. Uh, Durama did an excellent job of freezing Walter Wolf, but then he uh, threw fire damage down onto Walter Wolf, which removed his really nice play. So he basically counterplay themselves. Again, Dobby in the base uh, with ACD healing from outside. So the Walter Wolf running in for big damage. This Ogden running interference Ogden by pushing him away. Lock to keep him crushing the wall. A nice freeze there. But Walter oh, Wolf but the ward the needs to clone himself a few more times. And that's, that's going to be the that's game. game. Whew. All right, so we're going to take a quick look at the kill count here. We've got four, one, uh, seven again. No, eight kills on the side of. We're gonna do the math, we're but in do, the meantime. We're gonna do the math. In the meantime, we're gonna we're gonna throw it back to John, who's doing things with stabs and tables and the cosplayers. All right. I am actually at an entirely different table because I'm sitting back here with Graham to inform everybody watching the stream that you can easily enter a giveaway graciously hosted by Sapphire by doing simple things. So first yes. of all, you just have to go to their Steam group, which is Sapphire Technologies. You just go into Steam, press community, and you search Sapphire Technologies. Correct. Then you join that group, and there's going to be an announcement. There are tabs up there that says, well, different things. One of them is announcements. Mm -hmm. and the uppermost topmost one says something wizard wars yada yada click that one comment in that thread before 755 CET which is five minutes before the stream ends and you have entered the giveaway to win an R9 285 compact which is a really darn powerful car that you can put into almost any box yes so Anyone can enter, you don't have to own anything. I mean, if you want to own Wizard Wars, it's fine, but that game is free, so it doesn't really 
do anything. Um, and you can win a card, and that's yep. real nice. Uh, so before we head into the next game, Graham is actually going to head over to the pro team and talk with one of their players and kind of get the gist of their strategy and feelings and emotions and everything important. Yes, I will that, do just that. That already goings on. So, uh, the question is, which one of you shall I pick on to take the mic? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck between Macho Man here with the sick lightning plays, or it's going to be ACD. Um, we're going to ask you some more questions. Um, I had to come to you first, just for the, the style factor of the pistol <laughs> kills. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I really like the pistol. I've, I've used it since the first pistol came out, and it's, it's pretty much like my style to finish people off. So. Cool, yeah, I mean, that, that was my personal favorite weapon as well. Ever since that thing came out, I just loved it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, anything related to a pirate is cool. And flintlock pistols, come on. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the first execution on this Hagen, that was absolute textbook. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to shuffle on down the end now and now talk to Macho. Um, so, uh, yeah, we had um, some pretty uh, nuts traditional lightning play coming from you. Um, yeah. I As saw, usual, yeah. Yeah, I saw many cook devs. I saw you uh, going for the, uh, like, invading the uh, dev side of the map tactic. How do you think that worked out for you? Um, it, didn't act it didn't work that great, actually. No? Um, so I... I noticed you switched up towards the end. You kind yeah. of experimented with it, but... I mean, on a like a one v one basis, do you feel you can quite comfortably like take out any of the devs if you were to catch them on their own? Yeah, yeah. Sure, why not? Okay, we're pretty confident with that. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, we'll go for Dobby now as well. Uh, Dobby, we also saw you like tanking the entire world <laughs> in the middle of the dev team's base. Yeah, that's usually how it looks. I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I mean. Was this a strategy you guys thought before, you know, go in, hit them deep, or uh, was this something uh, you just kind of ran with and thought, I'm feeling a bit suicidal, <laughs> charge? I don't know, I usually end up fighting everybody okay. on my own and ruin it. Okay, no. so you just like to be the center of attention, I guess, yeah, is what I we're guess, saying. I guess. Okay, cool. <laughs> and, you know, I've, I've done, uh, you know, three out of the four, so I might as well uh, run over to... How is it? Is it Walter Wolf or Walter, Walter Wolf? Walter Wolf, because you like a random extra L in there. It always yeah. confuses me. So your game, how did you find uh, your uh, third match? I mean, any particular plays you feel stood out? Uh, yeah, it's just about farming the souls mm -hmm. and getting uh, like suiciding in, in suiciding missions to kill the tower. Okay, cool. To deal the most damage you can. Like when they drop to like two crystals, then I think uh, like two or three wizards should like go in there and start the dealing damage. Okay, so this is the tactic so far. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing that uh, maybe next week sometime we're going to see uh, much more powerful towers. Yeah, we're, going, <laughs> we're probably going to The, the make... devs are studying this and they're going to go back to the office tomorrow. And yeah, uh, yeah. so I can see uh, Nishagen chuckling to himself over there. So I will uh, go and have a quick word with uh, the dev teams. Not that anyone wants to hear from them really. But So David, you're the leader of the devs team. Yes. What's your excuse? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but I mean, we did uh, handle the first uh, try quite mm -hmm. well. Yeah, we yeah. actually won one. Yeah, yeah. Right? Skinny very happy. You got in there. Yep. Yes. Uh, the second one we should have won. It was a bit unfair. It was unfair. Yeah, oh, do do tell me more how they beat you at your own <laughs> game and it was unfair. Come on, Nisargon, the stream wants uh, to know. It's tricky. No, but it is uh, remarkable how, how quickly the skilled players actually pick up the pace and flow of the game yeah. mode. And they yeah. sort of... Second match was quite even, mm -hmm. I'd say. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was close. Both of you had chipped down that uh, effigy. Yeah, yeah, it was fairly close. And then towards, like, now, we're seeing how they actually get the grasp of the flow and the dynamics of the game mode and how you use uh, the spells and magics in a slightly different way. Yes, exactly. You were talking about this just before we started, in yeah. fact, weren't you? So, Okay, so what we're basically saying is they've learned and now you're about to get fully stomped <laughs> in this next game. Do we have a trick up our sleeves? Yes. Close. Yeah. Okay. We shall see. We shall see. Okay. Yeah. So if um, if the teams can get ready for the next game, um, right. we shall um, yeah just go easy on the devs. You know. Be gentle. Yeah. <laughs> actually. Um. Yeah. So we'll um, get these guys queued up, and for now, I'll just throw it to the casters and uh, back to the US. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back again in the United States of America. Of America, coming to you live from New York, not New York City, but somewhere else in New York. Uh, this is Black Box. This is Tolerasia. And we are going to cast probably another game of Legion winning. But if the devs do have a nice trick up their sleeve, that'll be great. 
I don't know, black box. I mean, I heard, I heard the plea, the plea of be gentle, and I'm beginning to wonder if they've got any more steam. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> For those of you who don't know Magicka, there is a spell. It's called Steam that you can cast. So, what do you combine, black box, to get steam? Fun. And water. Fire and water. And you have a couple of choices there. You can do fire and water and fire again for a lot of damage, or fire and water and water to put the water status effect on them. Or you can do fire, water, and a beam, and you get a, a steam beam. Steam beam. Or you could do fire. Oh, and here we go into game four. Oh, we are seeing some affinity changes coming in from the Pro team. Legion. They are running two players now with plus death. I think this is a beginning of the end for the for the developers in terms of. Oh, that's quite clever because there's a lot of they use a lot of beams yep. to damage the epi For Those who, who don't play Wizard Wars, the death uh, element is the primary element in the beam spell, which you see a lot of people using to damage the effigy on either side, and you can see basically that the uh, the pros are starting to sort of push towards that as their strategy. It does mean that Macho Man is not plus lightning this round, and they do have another player who is specking towards Frost. Frost being sort of the primary element for crowd controlling your opponents. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe we're gonna see some splits here in terms of roles in, in what they're trying to accomplish as a team. Yeah, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure why Macho Man decided to swap to Frost. It seemed like the lightning was working pretty well for it. Well, but I think I think what we've seen is that uh, getting all of the kills is not enough. You have to control the map. You have to control the enemy players, and and sometimes. All right, let's let's be honest. With these with these pro players, they don't they don't need any particular no you're right. to pick up kills. It's all just about about cleaning up the map. A, a gentle Ooh, a nice freeze here in the bottom. Macho going in for the death mine. Yeah, so that this is the cold coming through. He, uh, Macho Man is putting a ton of cold onto Dorama. He, oh, Dor Dorama putting his boots on, running past. Oh, a nice shield there from Dorama. We're still following him here into the right. It looks like he's going to try to... I'm uh, not he puts sure. Up the heel oh, again. Little Noob is the name of that shaman. Dorama he, is low. And he goes down. He's going to go down to uh, Where's the pistol finish? Yeah, very sad. No pistol finish. I was very excited. <laughs> Macho Man also finished off Squapper. That was a textbook for Legion. Looking at the kill count, well, not oh. the kill count, the soul count, it looks like the uh, pros have managed to pull a slight lead again. This is fairly standard for these two Zagan, teams. get out of there. Oh, a nice, a nice Both beam knockdown. players down. fall down. The Sagan throws a shield up. Really good anticipatory shield, but he is burning. He's going to have to ward himself or heal. That's good enough. That'll work. That'll It'll work. It'll work for right now, but he should probably run away. It looks like he's opting to try to just keep farming. So he's popping haste to get around from behind. This is... He's going to have to heal up. All right, he's going to farm. Okay. And the bottom right side, we do have a 2v1 happening between ACD, who's just popping his boots and making a run for it. So he's going to get reinforced from a teammate who's above. Macho Man picking up the souls first, and then he's going to be here to reinforce Ace of the. They should probably... We have a sneaky backdoor troll kill here happening in the middle. Squapper is trying to 1v1 the Bjorn. Walter Wolf coming in, putting a lot of... A ton of damage goes down onto Squapper from the troll and from Walter Wolf. Squapper's got to get out of there because... Oh, and oh. Ace of the. Was that, was that a pistol? That might have been a pistol kill. And it looks like the pro team is grouping up here to get these, to get these souls. That's We're not about, keeping track of the troll kills, but I would say that it's almost 20. all of them, it, no, almost oh. all of the, the troll kills have gone to the pros. Macho Man Macho. doing a 2v1. Look at that frost. Able to... Tep oh, goes down right a away. Beautiful chill from Macho Man. Froze him, and as he came out of the chill, he got hit with a rock right into an SFS. Macho Man showing us how Fire flexible he is. Look how fast Squapper is chilled. He has to deal with that and... Oh, He's so just swinging his melee weapon. <laughs> so Bring chill us back to uh, last October. The chill does prevent um, people from running away so quickly. So I think that was the notion behind Macho Man's affinity swap. Meanwhile, well, up in the t the middle of.